Welcome back, everyone, to the Bourbon and BS podcast. This is episode 99, one shy of 100. We've got Bobby Crow in the garage tonight, all the way from Texas. Dallas. Speaking of the mic. Dallas. <laughs> Which is in Texas. So, uh, Welcome back, Bobby. And I call you Bobby. Uh, Robert, for most people, I guess. No, it's, it's pretty much everybody from Columbus. It's Crow or Bobby. Okay. Okay. Well, good. And then we have Nate Hale back in the garage. We're doing the Facebook Live intro right now. Um, I wanted to, or actually, Nate, if you want to do the sponsors while I share this to get it going, if that's if that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Go All ahead. Right. Do your do your you know two dozen shares or whatever you got to do. Whatever it is. Um, so tonight we're going to be smoking the My Father La Gran Oferta that's being brought to us this evening by Tinderbox at Easton, Easton Town Center, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, between now and uh, next week. So we're going to be closed on New Year's Day. So at the end of the no, day, we're not closed on New Year's Day. It's actually uh, noon to six. So no more closing days. Right. So until close business Tuesday, the Grand Oferta is going to be fifteen percent off at Cinderbox. Uh, our second cigar this evening is the Royal Vintage Butera, and that is being provided to us by Altidish USA. So you got Butera, Onyx. They're most known for Monte Cristo, H. Upman, Romeo and Julieta, and slew of other brands as well that's right uh and then uh, we also got some bs silvers laying around on the table i know i've got one bobby probably i've got a it. couple over here oh okay. bobby can have one too all right oh, well last you. last week you gave away your bs silver i know you were, no it was two weeks ago no no it was with spencer and no, uh i did it two weeks bob in a row Rare. yeah this, wait this is two weeks in a row we have someone bob on it's the holiday right. spirit of sharing yeah it is um uh please like and share uh, leave us a review, uh, any comments, any feedback. Uh, Share it to any groups that you're a part of, like I'm doing right now. Not all the groups are going to approve it, but, I mean, if you guys think that it's uh, something that's relevant to a bourbon group or a cigar group or any any group, um, definitely share it to your groups as well. Yeah. Uh, and then also, uh, don't forget to check out the Patreon page. Uh, we've got a handful of patrons on there. Uh, help That goes to you know, help... Uh, Buy mixer boards, buy whiskey, uh, buy mics. Yeah, it keeps anything. this thing kind of self-sustaining, which is the whole whole point of this. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, and then also, you know, thanks to uh, some of our listeners, we had uh, Avi came through with uh, some. Yeah, I want to I want to announce that for the audio too. Yeah. So uh, Avi, we really appreciate appreciate you uh, donating this uh, newer MacBook. You know, it's still a few years old, but it's newer than what we were using uh so we really appreciate that so if, if anyone out there wants to donate anything like that whether it's equipment or bottles you know get in contact with us you know we'll gladly take it off your hands or come on the show that's a good way to donate there it too. just come on the show bring a bottle of whiskey and you can probably be bribe your way onto the show yeah that's, that's how i did it exactly that's, that's why bobby's here no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah, kidding. that's right not at all not at all it has nothing to do with his knowledge on this topic it's that it's just he brought a bottle of whiskey and that was his entry fee to be on yeah <laughs> pretty much you ever seen the movie clueless that's me uh yeah yes sound is not coming through is anyone else not getting the sound right now We're uh, on Anyone? hold here. Anyone? I can turn up mine. And see if no, I it's it's coming through. I mean, on uh, yeah, Kyle says it's coming through. So hopefully, uh, Kylie can hear it. So yeah, hopefully you guys. Uh, Thanks, Kylie. All right, good. Hi, Kylie, that hotel looked amazing, by the way. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas there. <laughs> let's uh, let's get started with the audio here, okay? You want to get started, and we'll do the intro one more time. Welcome back, everyone. Bourbon and BS podcast. Uh, this is episode 99, part one. And uh, so for those of you that are not on our Facebook Live, it's a good time to mention we go live every week. Tonight is uh, Thursday, uh, December 26th. We did not do a Wednesday night podcast because we had Christmas. And so for those of you that celebrated Christmas, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Welcome back to the podcast uh, for Bobby Crow, all the way from Texas. Which uh, he used to live here, moved away, and now he's back and still living there, but he's back and forth all the time, and he can explain kind of what he's doing there. And then Nate Hale also on the mic and uh, 
producing tonight, doing all the uh, the technology stuff today. We got Dustin Bovey in the garage. He's going to be handling the Facebook feed, and we have uh, Kyle B. Smith Photography. It's content, Kyle. It's Kyle B. Smith Photo on Instagram, doing all of our uh, our photography, which uh, he he takes some great shots. So uh, tonight we are going to be drinking something special that that Bobby brought all the way from Japan. It's the Four Roses Super Premium Whiskey, and we are going to be smoking the My Father La Gran Oferta, uh, the Robusto size, and we're going to be talking about comparison culture. So we're going to be talking about, well, we'll get into that, I guess, for more part two, but uh, it'll be an interesting discussion, I think, with these two guys with me, and then everyone out on the, the Facebook live feed, I hope you guys have some input as well. Want to uh, thank our sponsors for for part one. We've got uh, Tinderbox at Easton who provided the uh, my father the Gran Oferta. So thank you, Brian, and everyone up at the, the Tinderbox at Easton, and also for uh, my father cigars for making some great products. Uh, Altadis USA. We've got the Butera uh, El Dorado six fifty two. That's going to be what we're smoking for the second part, and uh, for the continued support, we finally got uh, the the f- finalized agreement for this uh, upcoming year so it's going to basically line up with the new year so i'm excited about that and uh and we also have some uh patreon support either through the uh, patreon page which is patreon.com slash bourbon and bs podcast you have an opportunity to do a monthly uh help and and this upcoming year we've talked about on uh previous episodes recently that we're going to have some thank you gifts coming forward so if you guys are waiting for the uh, thank you gifts, no need. If you guys want to start contributing to that, we appreciate that. And then once we come out with the uh, the new tiers, anyone that has been a part of the Patreon page up until that point will be getting the gifts once they come out. So don't don't hesitate if you guys want to help out. I do want to thank uh, Avi, uh, who's a loyal listener and a good friend. He, uh, he donated a uh, refurbished MacBook Air because mine was starting to fail from 2011. So this is a... Uh, it's a 2015 MacBook, but uh, it, with the specs that it has on it, it uh, it's it's plenty new and, and it's it's brand new as far as I'm concerned, and it is amazing. That was a very generous gift. So, Avi, thank you so much for that. It's going to help us out when we're doing the uh, the editing and the uploading to the audio. So, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, BS Cigar Company. I'm trying to think of what else we have. I mean, <laughs> BS Cigar Company. Thank you for sponsoring. It's amazing. But uh, other than that, how was your guys' Christmas? Nate, um, you guys both look at each other. It's like, who wants to talk first? Anyway. Uh, it was good. Uh, it was kind of long. Anytime you have to do uh, some traveling. You know, Bobby, you came up last week, so you, <laughs> you drove all the way from Texas, so I'm not comparing that. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you, you know, drive a couple hours one day and then, you know, the next day or two days later, you have to turn around and drive two hours back. You know, it, it can take its toll on you, you know, because in between there you got, you're just running around, you know, visiting and, you know, going to family or in laws or you know, a bunch of kids running around. Absolutely. So it, it wears on you, and uh, just you're happy to get home. So. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's not that for me. It's the traveling. I actually like the traveling because my home is where my friends are. So yeah. at the end of the day, like just because I moved to Dallas doesn't mean I haven't had a great, wonderful support from Ohio. Um, it's I, I'm very blessed to be able to just come back. And just give any of my buddies a call. I mean, Steve knows I bug him all the time. Um, to say not hey, all the time, but you do bug me a bit, a decent amount because I don't text. I, I'm a caller. It's just who I am. I'm old school in that sense. But at the end of the day, it's just I'm very thankful that after driving 19 hours, I could literally see my friends and literally not feel like I drove 19 hours. So it doesn't really affect me with that drive from That's Dallas. Nice. Um, even when I just got back from Akron to see, like, I have 18 cousins up there and like eight, like. Cousins, or second, whatever they are, nephews, nieces, family, family, extended whatever. family, all, all those, all my beautiful, crazy. Family. That was the topic the last time you were on too. It was family last. It time. It was family. Yeah, that was a good one. So oh, no, that was two times ago. Sorry, that was the first time you were on with family. So I've been on three percent of the episodes. Three <laughs> percent. <laughs> good math. Good math. <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing. Like I don't holidays, regardless of what you're celebrating, it's. As long as I'm with my family and my friends, mm-hmm. I'm always happy. That's amazing. Uh, my Christmas was, uh, it was good, first of all, to have a day off. Uh, <laughs> being in retail is, is not a uh, family-friendly type of her profession when it comes to the holidays. So uh, we did a lot of open-to-closes, several of us, Brian especially, myself, um, where it was you know, extended hours, 
long days trying to get to the gym in the morning, which I did. I was had success with that this this season, which I was happy with. And then uh, yesterday, or yeah, it was yesterday. Seems like forever ago, but yesterday on Christmas, um, it was just kind of a whirlwind. We went out on Christmas Eve, and I will. I want to say too, we have that the community page, the Bourbon and BS community page. So I, we have people from all over now a part of that page. But on on Facebook, it was something that I was like, you know what? Some people have been talking about doing a meetup thing, so I figured I'd put it out there that we were going to be going out for those that didn't have family or whatever that wanted to get out and you're in the Columbus area. And I tell you what, there were a few people, a handful of people that actually met up with us uh, in the Columbus area. That's nice. It was actually really cool. Yeah, so uh, Bob Keller, thanks for coming out. You're part of the, the community page. Ruvain uh, came out. A couple of other people actually came out and uh, had a couple of other people say they want to do it the next time because they couldn't do it with that. But Something to plan in the future. Some of the plan, and like I said, I mean, it's not bad if you're going out like on a Friday night. You can put it out on the community page and say, you know, whatever city you're in as it gets bigger, hey, heading out to this happy hour to check out some whiskey or smoke cigars or just whatever um, and, and see if anyone is in the area that wants to come out that night, if they're looking for something to do. I mean, and that's the other thing about sharing it, right? Because even me being in Dallas, I've met some people or at least got some great recommendations on that community page myself to go nice. check out different like shops and Go check out different bourbons and whiskeys that are available down there. So, I mean, at the end of the day, people might ask the same questions, but you don't know until you ask it on that page. So just reach out. I mean, that, we're your fellow peers at the end of the day. We just want to make sure everybody's having a good old time. Absolutely. And, and, and invite other people that, that you think would enjoy the, the, the conversation on there. So. Of course. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into this. And, and Avi is listening. He, you know, he gave me the, 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 the hands thing, the, the praying hands. Is that, is the, that clapping? No, I think it's more of like a thankful. a thankful type thing. So, Avi, once again, I mean that is that is huge. Everyone that's contributed to it, I, I really appreciate all the uh, the contributions. And then, you know, Spencer did the mics a while back. We've got some some equipment from 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 everyone out there supporting the podcast. So we really appreciate that. It's it's almost too generous. I'm flattered. I mean, at the end of the day, too, like if you do like for me, I don't like being called out for anything that I've done. I'm not saying I have or haven't. If you don't want to, just let them know. Because at the end of the day, it's you're supporting your community. You're supporting yeah. what you like. I mean, you kind of are like the people in the vote of what you want to hear. Right, too, exactly. Because you guys are asking us I appreciate on it. that. So, I mean, yeah. at the end I mean, of there's day. also a post on there about topic ideas. That's, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's there's absolutely almost, right. There's almost 60 comments on that thread. Yeah, um, and I'm going to reintroduce that here going forward. Cause yeah. That's where this my topic well goes came from. dry <laughs> when it comes well, to topics. Well, that's where tonight's topic came, tonight's topic actually came right. from one of our listeners. You're absolutely right. Who was it? My wife, <laughs> she has who's in the garage, yes. she is currently listening is in, in right live now. and in person. So yes. appreciate that. All right, let's let's get down to the, the part one here. Um, Four Roses Super Premium is what we are drinking. Uh, I'm looking at this. First of all, the bottle is is unique for Four Roses, and and I do want to mention. Um, I think Scott. Uh, it was a Scott GK. He's cracking a Four Roses in memory of Al Young. Uh, I don't know all the history. I saw it, but uh, one of Four Roses, I guess. Um, I think it's Four Roses. And Scott, if you're you're out there listening, please uh, give us a couple comments to give us some some feedback on that. But uh, one of their like people that are there for like 50 years passed away recently. So um, yeah, he's definitely a, a part of. I, I'm pretty sure it is Four Roses. So it's fitting we're doing this. But this one is unique to uh, Japan. It is not distributed in the United States. Bobby can give us a little bit more, or, or I know Nate looked into it. But the bottle is definitely different. It's more of like a wine bottle shape as opposed to, I guess it's more like the yellow. is kind of a similar shape. Yeah, it looks shape, more like the regular yellow. But it's got this beautiful... Um, it's, it's like an it's, emblem. Again, yeah, it's, it's a, a Four Roses emblem on it. It uh, looks like it's adhered to it, but yeah. it's like a gold copper look to it. Very, very cool. And then uh, the front is in English, and then as you turn it over, though, uh, all the uh, like the the warning, you know, like the uh, what do you call it? Yeah, that? so like all the warning, the technical stuff, all, is all the in like Japanese. ingredients, the legal stuff, legal jargon, like what they need to know. It's like their FDA approvals of right. what they can have. Yeah, is all in Japanese, um, and that's for any American whiskey, bourbon, anything that comes from the states um, has to get that special labeling. And it's the same thing with music, actually, too. So like if you buy in like what way? like so if you buy like an LP, um, a record player for some people who don't know might might not know what an LP is. Nice. Um, for vinyl, um, if you actually buy it, all the lyrics are going to be in Japanese in Japan, and then they're going to have the American lyrics also in there. So like I collect 
obviously bourbon and I collect vinyl. So I was able to get some pretty cool treasures when I was over there. That's neat. So very unique stuff. Uh, Scott GK said Al Young was a former distillery manager and uh, Primo senior brand ambassador. Great human being will be missed. So yeah, that, that was uh, Four Roses. So he was with them for a long time. So uh, cheers to Al Young, who clearly had an influence on all their products, including this one. So tough to lose people in the industry or, or anyone close to you. So um, where'd you pick this up? You were in Japan. Bobby recently, yeah. So yeah, so I um, it was my mission to find Blantons through Japan. So um, which why Blantons? Because the, so, the international was that green label? No, it's so they have a. I mean, there's Blantons uh, gold, Blantons uh, red, Blantons black, and Blantons black is actually exclusive to Japan only. Black. Yes. Okay. Um, and at the end of the day, like a lot of American whiskeys or bourbons, the Japanese actually, it's kind of like a hidden. Gem, Japan is. Um, you can go into these shops, all these local shops, and you can find Eagle Rare. Like, I think I posted on the community You posted page. a couple pictures, yeah. Like, you could find Eagle Rare just there. There's, like, 10 bottles. You could find Buffalo Trace, 10 bottles. You could find everything, like, literally just there. It's it, it makes you kind of angry that you live in Ohio or Dallas, that you can't find the stuff in your own state. Right. But Ohio, for sure. But it's yeah. it's... I mean, I bought back two suitcases of just bourbons and whiskeys. Did you because buy suitcases there? Or did you bring I did. Them with I them? actually <laughs> bought them when I got <laughs> there. Um, and it was funny because uh, the night I found the Four Roses, and I also posted the uh, private select that they had over there. Yeah. Um, they actually have a Four Roses Black, um, which is also exclusive to Japan. And the Super Premium is only exclusive to Japan only, too. Um, I ran into the guy who does all the Netflix um like substitutes all the Japanese to English for all the movies. He's from New Zealand. Like the closed captioning, or yeah, like all the, the closed captioning, all all the closed captioning. Okay, so he does all the translation to English. He has a thick New Zealand like Australian type of accent, and he speaks fluent Japanese. Where Where did you meet this person? I met him in Kyoto. Okay, um, and then I met up with him in uh, Tokyo. So basically, just like became friends with him. He basically was like. Whiter so. than Steve, and he's basically speaks pure Japanese. When you say whiter than me, you, complexion, just complexion or just complexion. Okay. I mean, it, you just don't. It's like when you go to any place. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's you don't expect when you like when you look someone looks like you and you, but he speaks completely Japanese and has a a perfect dialect. So he literally was like, Fair. "We're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go here." And he literally like it was like Christmas shopping. I think I walked like twenty miles that day with him. <laughs> Through all, all these bourbon, bourbon, all these bourbons, and they do open tastings, so you could actually taste Blattens for two dollars like a that. shot. I like Holy that. Sh- I'm not even kidding you. It was one of the. Th- That's really cool. I had no idea what I was getting into, but it was one. It was just me being. I'm just that weird person that will just talk to anybody. You certainly are weird, <laughs> but it and was a talker. <laughs> but it was a great adventure, and we found this bottle. He's like, I I haven't seen that one here in a long time. Yeah. So I ended up buying it, and yeah, that's how it got here. And this one, when we, we looked it up, like, as far as some information, it's interesting because they said, uh, what, 80%? 80% is eight years, eight years or more. And then 20%, 20% is was 10, 10 years, years or more. So yeah. it's going to be a little bit, it's still going to have the same ingredients as like a regular like yeah, small they batch. They use the same recipe. Yeah, same recipe as a small batch. But it, it's different percentages, different amounts. Correct. So it's going to have a little bit more of a lighter feel to it. Um, it's one of those, I mean, I. When I'm looking at the bottle and just the coloring, it, it just has a, a nice, like, sweet amber color to it. Yeah. And I haven't really actually... It's like a honey amber. Yes, mm-hmm. a vanilla-ish to it. Yeah. Um, but I really haven't dove into it yet because I want to see what everybody else's reactions is first before I form my own. Yeah, okay. And and Joe Clark's listening in, and he says, to, de- to defend Ohio. So for those listeners that are in Ohio, uh, and I'm sure that your state, wherever you're at, is, is similar to a point... Every state seems to be trying to get better and better at, at getting selections on the shelves, whether it's state mandated or it's it's just straight from the distributors. But I will say, he says uh, it's starting to get pretty decent. And I will say, I'm I'm seeing a lot more on the shelves in Ohio, which is nice. In Dallas, it's different, really, because is that state Texas? Yeah, or Texas in general, because the they have a sense tax, and they don't have like in Ohio, the prices are regulated for MSRP. 
Dallas it's not, or Texas it's not. Interesting. So, like, if you did, like, say, like, the small shop found had, like, a case come in of Blanton's or whatever you're right. looking for, maybe it should be $59 typically for that Blanton's. They could charge $99, $150. So it's not state regulated. Not at all. Not okay. in Texas. Which is a good thing for some and, and bad for other bottles. Correct. Because at the end of the day, I mean, just, like, I love a deal. That's just me personally. But at the end of the day, I... Not everybody can afford one hundred and fifty dollars for a blend that costs sixty bucks. No, and if you can't afford it, I mean, yeah, if you can't afford it, you shouldn't be buying it anyways. Well, no, it's not even just that. It's just I, I think if you have a, if for me being a bourbon, I love bourbon and yeah. whiskeys. I think people want to experience it, but they can't. Well, and that, but I think so. That's we talked about this recently, and they it was, it was with yeah, it was with Bob and Spencer and other podcast episodes, but it's it's. States that don't have to do that, now states as a whole, for example, like Ohio, we were talking about like um, Weller Antique is the most recent example that I can remember, and Henry McKenna, Mm -hmm. 10. Those used to be $28 to $30 bottles, and now they're both $50. Mm -hmm. Because of the secondary market jacking up prices, basically, if anyone's going to get that money, it's not, they're they're saying it's not going to be the consumer. You know, so if if anyone's going to charge $100 for a bottle of Blanton's, it should be the person that's selling it, not the person that bought it for sixty and then turn around and make thirty bucks off of something they didn't do anything other than put it on, you know, a listing. I don't know what the rules are about selling another bottles to like closed it's, groups. I know what happens, illegal. but at the end of the day, yeah. like these are state regulated stores. Like I know Indiana is the same way. You, I mean, you can't even buy beer cold there. Mm. You have to buy it warm. There, um, when I bought my uh, Black Prince from Indiana, yeah. the Boss Hog, yeah. I mean, I paid five hundred dollars for that. How much? Five hundred dollars. Right. And That's retail. That's retail. Yeah. No, it's not. It's actually they marked it up in Indiana. It's actually four fifty. So, but still significant. It, you it's know. fifty dollars. Yeah. Fifty. At the end of I the agree. day, it. How how finicky do you want to be about the rules? You know what I mean? It's well, and I will say like so. You know, Scott from Ohio Bourbon Times is saying you know controlled state works well. Ohio doing great things. I I agree to a point if you have someone that's really pushing the envelope and trying to get it better and better and more competitive and everything like that. I, I still personally am, and I'll say it over and over again, I don't like the the fact that the secondary market has has raised prices across the board. But it, I, it makes sense. I mean, it's what people are going to pay for it. So if they're already paying for it, then I think the people that created the, the whiskeys should be getting more of a cut. And I think the people selling the whiskeys to bring it into the state should be getting more of a cut and not necessarily – the consumer. I'm not against anyone that's doing the secondary market. I'm just saying that it's it's. I think the person that should get the most or should get the least is probably the person that bought it on a shelf and then turned around and sold it. Yeah, because they didn't well, do shit. True. They were just there. Uh, like, oh, I'm putting in my time. I'm standing in line. I'm doing all that stuff. It's like that's that's actually a strong argument. You know, what I mean, you're 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 getting it off well, the shelf and into people's hands. Well, here's but, my here's my question. If so, antique. You know, that was a twenty eight dollar bottle and then i want to get back on the four rows and now it's up we're we're off and now it's target now it's up to 50 so (laughs) the antique's gone up 20 bucks on you know at msrp but of that 20 dollars, is the distillery getting any more of that no or is it just the state and the liquor agency i would think at some point that they could raise their prices too they can and and so it's just like a tv like samsung or apple i mean they're all msrp products right Mm -hmm. so at the end of the day like MSRP is meant so they can't mess with the pricing structure across the board. Even when you buy a Tempur-Pedic bed, it's all MSRP. It's always going to be the same price or that business. Like, for example, if you get a deal on a Tempur-Pedic, and I, or as I know this is because it, it happened before it got regulated, mm-hmm. that business or that store can lose their license. Mm-hmm. So that's the same thing with cigars is that if they – and you can, you can charge anything you want for a cigar. You can give it – you know, do a sale or whatever – but in the cigar industry, it's it's a contract cigar. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can't go below a certain price. Correct. Yeah. On the flip side of that, it's not about it's not necessarily about like charging more. Yes. It's about charging less because they're trying to make it a, an equal market across the board for you know if this my father Lagrana Oferta, say it's a MSRP of like say nine ninety five, they don't want someone across town se- yeah selling for seven dollars or even online they're saying that you can't sell it for cheaper because then that's going to drive down. Everything. It and also, everyone's it also at that hurts point. the perceived quality of that cigar, I think, sometimes. It, it yeah. can. I mean, that's what the manufacturers are doing to keep the integrity of their product. Right. Right. And that's what a lot of any product you buy, right? So at the end of the day, 
if it's a small limited batch or a very hard to find, if this is only made in Japan for this Four Roses, right? right. It's it, it's one of those things where what's that cost to you, right? As a person that who wants to buy it at a different yeah. price, so yeah. it's it, you we. I had the choice of shipping it here and spending $150 or me getting lucky and finding it in Japan. Right. So how much did you find this for in Japan? I found this for 40 bucks. Nice. And so the MSRP supposedly, but there's not, I don't know. I don't speak Japanese. I don't understand how their rules are, but based off the the online content that I read, take it at as much as you will. It's, it's supposed to be around 50 bucks. Um, all around Japan. So there's 42 states in Japan. If, okay. So there's fun fact. 42 uh, states in Japan. I visited with my wonderful wife five states and 17 different cities that whole 12 days when I was there. Wow. That's a lot. So, and Ooh. from like, it's funny because from Osaka, which is kind of like on the bottom to Tokyo, it's an 18 hour drive, which is kind of like Dallas to Columbus. Okay. But you could take the train and it's only a three hour train ride. Because it's one of those hyperspeed yes. trains. Yeah. So that was fun. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so, but no, this bottle is, I didn't find that many of them. Um, I, I, I bought two. Um, I would say each store probably had one or two. Um, but the funny part is if they opened up the bottle for you to taste it, you can't buy that bottle. So like, even if you were paying like uh, 200 yen, which is like two bucks for that, like to keep trying it, um, if you say I want to buy the whole thing of whatever's left, they won't let you do it. So you can't even take the open bottle with you. Do they then use that for more samples? No, I, I no. They just open up another bottle. It's basically they write off the first bottle. It's just like if you went to Kroger or Giant. That's Adorn. really interesting. So wow. it, was, it was. I would think it'd be like a bar where it's like that's the that's the the sample bottle. Oh yeah, because I literally stayed at uh, in Osaka at one of the um, liquor stores with. Uh, you Dom. stayed overnight at a liquor store? They don't have any cutoffs. There's no rules. <laughs> There's at least that I know he of. He tried I, to stay there for a night like it was a hotel. Airbnb. Yeah, I did, pretty much. And oh, okay. um, I was with Dom, who was that guy from New Zealand. And I'm like, well, I'm like, because I, I begged and pleaded to get this Blanton's. I'm like, well, fine. If they're not going to give it to me, I'm going to finish it off with him. And we just enjoyed the evening tasting that Blanton's the whole evening. Tasting it over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. I just wanted to check quality. So, yeah, just <laughs> drinking is what you're talking about. No. All right, so let's get the Four Roses. Um, Four Roses Super Premium. Nate, what do you think of this so far? You, you've had a couple sips of it, yeah? I have. Um, uh, it's It's got a lot of viscosity. It's very oily because mm-hmm. it just it just absolutely coats your palate. Um, it's it's very enjoyable. I think it's you – sa- you said it's, what, 80% is 8-year and the other yes. 20% is 10-year. Mm-hmm. It, it almost tastes uh, – it's, it's not as – rich as i was kind of expecting for something that's that aged really um okay it doesn't have as dark a color either as what i would expect for something to be that age like no i'd agree with that i would looking at this i would think it was more like a you know six year uh, you know four to six years something like that yeah it's not it's Um, not very dark it tastes better than a four to six year Uh Um, better how what do you what do you what do you think well you think it's smooth bobby oh let him finish this okay (laughs) No, I was trying to take another drink so I can get it on my palate. Um, I mean, it's got a nice, it's got a nice bit of pepper to it, um, and not not like a, a heat, not like a hot pepper, but just a, a nice kind of spice to it. Um, I think the vanilla breaks it down. It does. Um, it's got a, it's also got a lot of oak notes to it as well. Um, surprise! Which surprise! Right? That doesn't yeah that doesn't surprise me. Uh, being as old as it is, you know, I would I would expect to get more of those oak notes. But for being as aged as it is, I would I would almost think that uh, it should have a deeper, darker color to it, and maybe even more of the like it has more oak notes than what the color would dictate, in my opinion. Okay. Now I, I was listening. I was looking at Dustin because we had a question: What's the proof again? And I don't see it on the bottle. We but haven't talked about that yet. Dustin's saying eighty. You want to verify that? I mean, it's going to be the same as this as a small batch. So, if the small batch here in the states is eighty, I would assume it's small, eighty. No, small batch is more than that. This is eighty six. Okay, so it's eighty six proof according to the World Wide Web, <laughs> which is always correct. That's right, uh, Bobby. What do you think of it? You're you're the one that that 
brought this across the world to us. What do you think? I I think after all the holiday driving, hmm. <laughs> and you need a drink. That too. Okay. Um, no, I. It's a very light bourbon. To it me. is actually, yeah, and it's, it's, it's very, very light. it's very relaxing, and it does have a little heat with that pepper taste, mm-hmm. but you don't feel it down like once you get it past like the end of your tongue. Right? No, it, so, it just stays in the back of your mouth. It and, doesn't. It doesn't go down. Yeah. And and then literally once it does go down, it's just like okay, that was. It's almost like water. It's refreshing at that point to me. So I think it's yeah, it's it's kind of cooled down. It had a little bit of uh, bite, I think, in the beginning, like the first couple sips. Um, we had a, a, a small taste of uh, Bell Mead before this, and so I don't know if that affected it at all. But I, I will say that uh, it it's got it's got smoother, and it's gotten more like the creamy sweetness. Look at the legs. I mean, if you look at the legs and like how it slowly it drops back. Oily. Down, That's why I was it, talking about the oil and viscosity. It. It, I think it's almost coating. Well, so, it, it coats your palate too. I and, mean, like you, you, you taste it all over your palate, but I, it's not. I wouldn't describe it as a long finish. I'm getting a little like mint too from it. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the heat, but yeah, Dustin. No, that's what I get. The uh, like you said, Nate. The heat. It's not like a spice or a peppery. It's that peppermint. Like you just. Yeah, that's what just, I'm saying. Like just minty. got done having mouthwash. Not, the, not oh. that strong, though. Not, I don't wanna, not that I don't strong. Want, it to, doesn't like linger least, as strong. See, that, but like, that takes away from the flavor if you say mouthwash. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's that like kind of it's same sensation. <laughs> I mean, if you want to brush your teeth with it, I would. It would clean all the germs, I, mean, I guess. But I get, uh, bourbon I get that sweetness. Why haven't we even invented this yet? <laughs> but I also get uh, a good handful of floral notes as well Yes, from yes. it, too. So it's kind of that balance of the sweet and floral. The flavor. Okay. The palate, yeah. Okay. What do you think, Steve? <laughs> I've already I've already said a bit okay. of what, what I think. What flowery notes do you get, though? <laughs> Hint of lilac. No, I'm just no, kidding. I, Lavender. I, I can't narrow down the specific no, I mean, flower. No, I mean I I I, I kind of see that like the floral. That's like the lightness. I don't really. I mean I can't really pinpoint floral, but I mean I think uh, that's. It's funny. Like the mint is more. Again, it's. I wouldn't say it's like a. a I, I get what you're saying with the mouthwash, like hint almost. I mean, if you want to say that, it's it's something like. That's something that I would expect to get in like my stocking for Christmas is like someone got me a bourbon mouthwash. You know what I mean? Like an effervescence. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, it'd exactly. be great. Best that's, that's best something. uh nightcap in a sense, <laughs> but I wouldn't spit it out. <laughs> uh, all right. So on that note. <laughs> I do think that it's um it, it does have a bit of that mint. I mean it's coming back more and more, but it, it's it's very smooth. It's it's funny. I mean, I don't know if anyone is following along kind of the the, the road we're going down as far as you know, you got the, the the creaminess. You've got the a little bit of vanilla, the um, the sweetness, a little bit of spice, but then the mint. I mean, I don't it's know well if that rounded. sounds good or not. I mean, it's it's it's, it's well rounded in the sense of if I'm going to drink this like with a meal, I can eat any meal with it. Right. If I want to smoke it with a cigar, drink it with a cigar, or drink it. Sorry, smoke a cigar and drink Bingo. this Bingo. with it. I think it complements and only pulls the flavors of that cigar so like that pepper i'm tasting in my cigar i think it gives more of a like a peppermint slash that mint taste that you guys are talking about because of the cigar personally but when i first tasted it without smoking the cigar i think i got more of those vanillas and the the oakiness before so i think it's amplifying whatever you're doing yeah i think it's complimentary yeah joe clark says bourbon mouthwash i swear officer i wasn't really drinking that's not, <laughs> not bad <laughs> <laughs> not yeah it's not good bad. luck with that he also says in a world where every bourbon seems to be a hundred plus sometimes it's nice to dial it back we've had that conversation on here before yeah. and I, I would agree completely is that i think that um all the like barrel proofs we did last week we did a lot of high high proof stuff yeah, everything and, and was i over enjoy 100. it I, I tried something the day before leaving the shop actually uh jim johnson was uh, kind enough to share just any i was the one that said no i can't i just want to have a sip because I had to, run, you know, come to this, but uh, it was the 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 town branch, yeah, town yeah. branch single barrel uh, barrel proof. It was like sixty some percent, and it was you could only get it there at the yeah. distillery, I guess. And it was it was one that really shocked. I mean, like it exploded. I mean, when as soon as it you 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 taste it, and it was a lot. This, on the other hand, is something that it's more subtle, and I I think is an easy sipper. 
Yeah, I I think this is something that if it was available in the states, like this would be a good bottle to. I mean, at forty dollars a bottle, yeah. yeah, this this would be a good bottle to get on a you know, fairly regular occasion because yeah. it's just a good everyday sipping whiskey. Yeah, I agree, and I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of even this Four Roses small batch, yeah. which I think is hotter tasting than this. You got to remember too, like in Japan, they don't really do well with higher proof. Really? Like, so, and also they have more allergic reactions to drinking. So, like in the Japanese culture, like if you notice, yeah. like sometimes when they drink, they actually get more red. And it's because usually either, after one drink. And it's because their body is not used to either like the hops in beer or really? any certain like of the breakdowns of the alcohol content. So, that's also why it's more available in Japan for these types. Um, they prefer scotch, which is even weirder. Mm-hmm. They like more of a smoky taste, but that would also make sense with how they do their barbecue, how they, their food that they actually are they specialize it's more in. Their f- it's, flavor their flavor. Profile, it's their flavor. Yeah. That's their palate. So interesting. Um, I would say that maybe with how they're doing the eight years at the eighty percent, and then the ten years at the twenty percent. I think it gives it the more of that balance that you wouldn't see here in the States because we are – I've noticed more people are like, I want these small batches. I want how you're going to change it. It's, you're getting something different every single time versus what – this is going to be like kind of like always the same. Yeah. It's, you're talking consistency. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah. That, that's one of the things that I like uh, about a bourbon is like I, I want consistency. I want one bottle to taste just like the next bottle or just – just like the bottle a year from now. So. I think the small batches, I think that's part of the, you know, with, with, with the way that the culture is in the bourbon community. Yeah. It, now it's, it's, it's Everyone hotter. loves those it's, two it's, words. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's barrel I, proof. It's yep. small batch. It's, you know, uh, what's a single barrel? Yes. I mean, it's, it's because that's part of the, the collector side of it. And, and that's the way you can have all or these different things. uniqueness to it as well. Cigars are the same way. I mean, cigars are the same way. It's, as funny as it is, people that, that smoke, you know, regular pr- produced cigars, you, you've got it where it's, they don't understand that it, much like this, where there's more process, I guess, but this is straight just tobacco where you're going to have that where, you know, the reason it doesn't taste quite the same like it used to is because the crops have been, you know, affected by the, the environment. But, like you know, wine. Had a, like wine. Yeah, exactly. There's good years, there's bad years, but they expect it. If it has that label on it, it's going to taste like, like a Marlboro Light tastes like a Marlboro Light. You know, it's it's a, a Grand Oferte should taste like a Grand Oferte. That's not always the case, but when you do the limited production, the small batch or the, you know, whether it be whiskey or cigars, you're going to have something unique that you can just pump it out and hopefully you have enough of a following and you have people that are going to actually want to get that their hands on it and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Like Starbucks? <laughs> like Starbucks, you want it to taste like Starbucks. And that's the funny part is when I'm in Japan, it tastes, tastes exactly like the same. As it is here in the States. So at the end of the day, it's, I like that consistency personally. I think it's also, like I said, after traveling and being on the road, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I'm happy we went with this bottle because it's different. No, and thank you very much. This is amazing. So I think, I think it goes, I think, I think it, uh, one of those happy accidents in the pairing, like, it like the, so, it goes very well with this cigar. Yeah, so and that that that's a good segue to the to the cigar. It's my father, La Gran Oferta. This is the uh, uh, last year's at the IPCPR, which is the trade show. For those of you that aren't uh, following the cigar industry, now it's called the PCA. That's going to be the organization for uh, premium cigars. Uh, any of the retailers, any of the manufacturers. So they do a once a year uh, trade show, and and this was released last year, not this last previous summer, but the one before that. And uh, this is going to be an Ecuadorian Habano Rosado um, wrapper. And then you've got Nicaraguan filler and binder, which I assume, I, I, I assume, and I, I couldn't really find out much about it, but I assume that it's, it's stuff that they grow mainly, I would assume. Probably. Uh, yeah. It's got gorgeous detail on the band. It's a good-looking cigar, not very veiny, uh, not very toothy in my opinion. I think it's a pretty smooth. you got the, the wrapper off there, Bobby. Mm-hmm. I mean, looking at it, it's it's a it's a got a nice sheen to the wrapper. It's it, it's it's good looking, well constructed. Mine's a little bit uh, tough on the draw. I don't know about you guys. No, like when after I cut mine, just looking at the head of it, it looks like it's rolled kind of tight. But the draw has been absolutely effortless with mine. It's just been very smooth. Get a lot of smoke through it. It, 
I mean, it's the way a cigar should be. It looks like it's tight. There's a lot of tobacco in there, but it's just burning well. It's drawing well, and it's just you know having all the right flavors to it. What about you, Bobby? Construction I mean, wise, I mean, I think it's it dies down pretty quickly. As far as like it, it, it need, burn, you, you either need to stay on it or you need to keep relighting it. Correct. Okay. I've had to do it three times. Relight it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, but. It, I don't mind that. Sometimes. I, I haven't, which is probably why I'm a lot further down than you guys are. <laughs> Could be. We were doing most of the talking too early on. <laughs> no, I mean, but even when it relights, you know how sometimes you get that extra smokiness that you don't like. From yeah, it? I I didn't get that from this. No. So, no. I, this is one of those cigars. You know, a lot of people when they think you know, when they look at a lot of the my father cigars like uh, uh, La Opulencia or Le Bijou, you know, they expect something. You know kind of strong a lot of spice to it this it, it's more of a i would say a medium body on this one but it's very smooth has a great flavor to it it's got just a little bit of uh pepper to it on the retro hail which is what i come to expect from anything coming out of my father and i think all of that is why it pairs so well like it's a good medium flavor it's you know medium body whiskey you know a little bit of pepper on both they just complement each other very well well, I don't know if, if, if my father's cigars would want me to say this necessarily, but I think this cigar smokes better with a bourbon than by itself. I don't think that was, I mean, that's not normally the intent when you, you blend something. Same thing with like a, a whiskey. You don't necessarily, you want it to be a standalone. I mean, obviously there's, there's lower grade, if you will, um, you know, whiskeys that are n- meant to be mixed. I'm not saying that's what we're dealing with, but I will say um, that this cigar is about two, three dollars less than some of their other offerings in recent years. So, like the La Opulencia that you brought up, Nate, that's going to be for this size. It'll be about another two, three dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's and then the new La Promesa from my father is similarly priced. I think that they've done, kind of done a couple here recently that I don't want to say it's it's lower grade tobacco. I don't want to say it's it's no. they're rushing it out. They're using lower lower rollers i i just think that that's maybe what they're doing there they can't necessarily have everything coming out the same price point they they, they introduce this one that i i'm not always a big fan of this this blend however on paper i should be based on my palate and then smoking it tonight with this four roses super premium it is smoking better for me as far as flavor than it has in the past i think the two do complement each other i think it actually would pair better with the bs uh, no, I mean uh, I'm being honest, because gold or silver, it's, uh, I would say the silver. Really, a little more pepper. Because yeah, because I think the pepper, I liked it when I was when I was sipping on it that when it actually has that more peppery taste to it, and like I said, it's I don't really, I guess it's, it's hard for me for cigars, right? Because whenever I go in the tinder box, and I think I've said this on previous episodes, it's, yeah, yeah, I go in there, I'm like, hey, Steve or Nate or Todd, or Ryan, or Brian, whoever's there, just pick me out a cigar. Because I don't, for me, it's just, like I said, it's always about the experience with a cigar and who I'm with. Mm -hmm. Same with the bourbon for me. It's, I I remember the memories from it versus always the flavors from it personally. Well, it is hard to be objective sometimes because it is subjective when you think about like this bottle for you and now this cigar and being back in Ohio you, ha- you you traveled all the way across the world with this, right? So you got the Japan memories. You already told a couple of those. And then now you bring it on here and you're drinking it, talking about it, and now you're smoking the cigar. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's tough to be objective sometimes. And I, I don't think you should have to be objective all the time. I mean, if I was a pro and I was getting paid to be objective and critique every cigar. Yeah, I'm not paying you. No, I hope not because I don't want to be. Um, <laughs> well, we're that, paying him with cigars tonight. That's true. Yeah, he, that's he, true. Got, he gave us whiskey. You are giving him cigars. It, it, for me, at the end of the day, it's I enjoy who I'm with and the stories from it, right? That's good. Just like because I'm more thinking, what what do you, when you compare to the Angel Envy last time I was in Ohio? The mm. cask strength that that's, you yeah, the, graciously opened. And, no, but I want, no, but I'm curious. How, how did that taste? That was, that was, I think that's a phenomenal bottle. I think, you know, but two different worlds. And that's, I guess, not not saying one's better or worse. I'm saying like, just take the price tags off it. Take the the packaging off of it. Give me two glasses. They are just almost two different products. And, but that, when you're saying like a standalone product earlier in your comments, Mm -hmm. to me, obviously that Angel Envy is going to be a standalone product, but 
that to me comes off a of standalone product. So what cigars do you think come off as a standalone product? And I know you're not making anything bad about my father because I love all well, the no, storylines in that. Yeah, was, yeah, sticking with the my father line, I, I'd say um, you've got you've got a couple of them. I think subtlety in, in recent years, I think uh, the the Opulencia is a nice standalone product, but it, it would also complement a lot of things. I think that that cigar is more subtle than I thought it would be. Uh, Le Bijou from from that Le Bijou 1922 is is going to be a bold cigar that is is very very tasty and if, and that's just that's not even talking about like going off onto other my father products like the La Duena it doesn't say my father uh, you know it doesn't have the the MF logo but it's something that they're producing and I think that's a standalone product I think they they make a lot of standalone products and again the La Gran Oferta is not necessarily a bad cigar on its own I just I'm enjoying this one. I'll, I'll reiterate. I'm enjoying this more than I ever have. And I've, I've probably smoked. It's less than 10. I mean, I've probably smoked like five to eight of these before because it wasn't always my favorite. It's not something I ne- normally go back to. But uh, again, smoking it on its own is good. Like it's a, it's a, it's a well-constructed con- cigar, and I think a lot of people like it. But at least in our shop, it doesn't really sell like 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 hotcakes. I mean, it's not the, the best seller by any means when it comes to to the My Father line. The Judge sells pretty well when, when people know we have it. And like I said, the Le Bijou is one that, not only because it got high rankings in some of the publications, but it, it it's it's a very good standalone cigar. Yeah. Well, In fact, the, it probably smokes better on its own than with a whiskey. Well, the, the Le Bijou was the 2015 Cigar of the Year in Aficionado. And then three years before that, in 2012, they had number one with the Florida Las Antillas. Which, again, is not under the My Father brand branding right yes it does not have the my father yeah. logo on the band yeah so people wouldn't necessarily know it just by looking at the band but you know those are cigars i think that stand out those cigars move i yeah. I, I, th- I think the Las Antillas moves a lot better than the Le Bijou does even though i prefer the Le Bijou over uh, yeah. the Las Antillas. they're two completely different Florida cigars Las Antillas is, is more of like a medium plus yeah you know it's, it's more universal for people that are that are smoking it'll hit more palates than say a Le Bijou. Yeah, the label is a fuller body smoke. Yeah. It's richer. It's got, it's got a lot more body to it, um, and I, you know, because it has the My Father logo and it's that dark, almost black wrapper that's on it. it yeah, and it's got the orange footband. Every single one of their footbands is a different color too, almost. The, the <laughs> so marketing meant for Browns fans. What's that? The no, 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 no. They, <laughs> no, that cigar's a winner. Oh, <laughs> oh. That, that shot fired. Oh. And, and, and please comment me. below about that yeah. one. If you want to throw Nate underneath the bus, I'll be more than happy to read those comments for you guys. <laughs> and, and forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but uh, is it Siku or Seku? Uh, Nia, uh, apologize if I mispronounced that, but uh, it says La Promesa is slept on also. And again, I'll say that with my father, when we're talking cigar talk here, I think the La Promesa is much like the La Gran Oferta. It's, it's a good cigar. But on its own, it's not a. I don't think it's a. It's not as a well balanced cigar as some of the stuff they make. So it's it's something that, at least again, once in our shop it, it, in, in Columbus, Ohio, Tinderbox, it it didn't it didn't blow blow everyone out of the water. It, you know, we had our first few boxes, and then we rarely were asked about it after it was the new cigar. What do you have new? Yeah, I guess what's the price points between all those different. Well, like I said earlier, it's, it's so like this one is going to be in that kind of uh, I want to say like ten ninety five on this one. The Rubio yeah, show? like eight to eight to eight to eleven, and then the La Promesa is much the same. Then you have La Opulencia, you have Le Bijou. I mean, the Le Bijou, like for example, for a similar size as this, is is twelve ninety five. Yeah. So I guess when like for me, like if I'm coming into the tender box, yeah. right, or anybody who's listening comes into the tender box, um, what are you going to recommend? between like in that price range with this type of cigar right so you see where i'm going with it like yeah so what does this compare with across the board I yes mean, much like we talk about with the bourbons i mean this this one here so say this is a ten dollar cigar that opens up to a lot of different cigars i will say this does stack up against a lot of ten dollar cigars absolutely and it's funny when for those that you're, you're more into bourbon than you are in cigars or or you're not in either of them but just comparing the two a a eight dollar cigar versus a twelve dollar cigar is I would say the equivalent to $30. a yeah, like a twenty five thirty dollar bottle versus a forty five fifty dollar bottle. Maybe sixty, depending on the bottle. I mean, again, sixty. I mean, that 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 scale will will change once you get in that sixty seventy dollars. Now you're in that like thirteen to fifteen dollars cigar, in my opinion. 
Once you get to hundred dollars, eighty to a hundred, one hundred twenty. I'm, I'm talking like everyday stuff, not like the really rare stuff, not like your your whistle pig. Oh no, uh, no, you know no, I mean? no, no, like, no, no, no. That's like I mean, those pig, are different. Those are one. Whistle pig is like the the, the Davidoff, Davidoff Royal, Royal release. release. It's a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Like, but I mean like a lot of like the the Davidoffs or like the the Padrones. Now you're in that twenty to thirty dollar range. That's going to be that eighty to a hundred dollar bottle. You know what I mean? It's not something that te- n- most people aren't going to have. You know, every time they walk in the liquor store, you're like, oh, let me just peruse this shelf. What what bottle do I want between a hundred and eight? You know, or 80, uh, 120. That Joseph Magnus. <laughs> the Joseph Magnus, yeah, that you, you, you donated as well, Bobby. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I'm a little different when it comes to, like, because I'm not the biggest drinker, right? You'd, be, you'd think I would be, like, an alcoholic based off of, like, how much... Coming back from Japan with two suitcases of whiskey? I mean, yes, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, I gift a lot of those... So a lot of listeners, listeners like, I love to donate to the podcast you do yeah and i very very generous and it's and i don't want praise for at the end of the day right it's because i want whoever is going to be here i don't care if they're like this person of this company or just a regular joe schmo off the street i want them to be able to enjoy a good bottle i don't care what the occasion is because the occasion is to be with steve nate or who's ever at the table at that time right so just because i buy expensive bottles I like the stories of where I got them yeah. and I can share those stories because that's the only good story I'm storytelling I'm at. I can't tell you like a good story from being at a bar or my wedding, even though I had a great time and I love my wife. It's just, I remember what I was smoking outside at my wedding. Right. I mean, because well, what did if, I do at my wedding? What did I do? I came into this the cigar shop and did I buy how many sticks? A lot. So, because I want everybody to enjoy the food, enjoy the drinks, enjoy this, uh, the sticks because that's those are my memories. Well, it compliments the memories is me, a, a, I think a different memory. way of saying it is it compliments the memories. It basically you know it, it adds to the the experience. Correct. You know, and, and not saying you need to add to a wedding. You know, <laughs> obviously you're there for a reason, and, and a lot of it though <laughs> is that the reason you do it a, a certain way for a lot of people they'll 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 really do it up. You know, and they, it's all like what what dress do you get? Obviously for the women, they, what what are people wearing? Who's there? Like what's the food? Like all stuff. If it was just about the actual ceremony, you don't need any of that stuff. But it's a party. It's 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 memories. It's a big. It's a celebration. Festival. Yeah, I, celebration. I ex- there you go. Because yeah, I I don't expect anything from the podcast, right? So for me, well, thanks. That's saying a lot. No, it it does. I mean, no. It, the only thing I expect. <laughs> I don't think many people expect much from this podcast. No, but I I I, I disagree because <laughs> I'm just I'm people kidding. get very passionate in the comments, and I know I joke around a lot. Like you got my sense of humor is very very. How would you describe? I mean, I can't describe. Oh no, I'm waiting for you to finish that sentence. I ain't finishing that one. <laughs> come on, Nate, help me out. I, I, over the years that you've actually gotten to know me, and the more I've come like in, a year that I've known you, sure, year, year and Months. a half. We don't even talk that much. It doesn't matter. But at the time, as <clears throat> based off the comments, you, you have an okay. opinion, is what he's saying. Okay, okay, I'll share I, that opinion. I, I value your opinion. Okay, I'll share that opinion. Um, when I first met you, I thought you were a dick. And that's the and that, that's and that's true. I'm and, like a virus, and that's and uh, that's you know I was I was gonna say that that you know my opinion of you has changed over the last year. You're you're, you're no longer well. I don't think you're a dick. You're not you're, as much of a dick. <laughs> no, I no, uh, no, no. It was just I'm not, one of those. Like, no, no. It was one of those. Um, like the way you come across and your personality was, you know, it's very bold. Uh, and you know that was something that took a, a little bit to get used to. Correct. Once I actually got to know you a little bit, like that's when it's like, all right, the appearance is one thing; the inside's a little bit deeper, a little different. Well, and I appreciate that because I, at the end of the day, and I, Steve, you know me for years now. I've known you several years. Yes. And at the end of the day, right? For me, I do come off as a dick. I know I do. And but I have a really good heart, and I have a really good soul about certain things. I, I think with a lot of people, you know. You, me, like when we're being an ass, like we're doing it on purpose. Like we have to actually try to come across that way because that's not how we just regularly are. Are you bringing me into this? No. No. Well, I I can. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm I'm over here. I'm fine. I think you're the other way around, Steve. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, we're talking about Bobby right now. Oh, oh, okay. It's not, it's not the Bobby (laughs) show. This is the bourbon and BS podcast. My whole point is, my whole point is with the community and the comments, right? For me, I, I don't think twice before I post. I don't think twice before. I don't. I really don't. And the, the reason why is I'm just saying what I'm thinking at that point. And it, if people take that as my character, I'm sorry. 
but at the same time, but but at the same time, if just like how you guys had the events, right? If I'm out with you guys, I'm gonna buy you a drink, right? If I'm at the if I'm at the cigar shop, I'm gonna enjoy a story and have a good old time, right? Just because you're online, one appearance can be something completely different, right? So at the end of the day, the whole point of what I donate to the towards the podcast or what we get to smoke on the podcast and what I get to learn from the podcast. That to me trumps everything, regardless of how I might have done something differently. Because I do care about it, and I care about the members, and I care about your initiative and what you guys are bringing to the table. No, that's awesome, and that's different from any other podcast I listen to. That's, that's fantastic, and and I'll I'll say that you know when it comes to this is that obviously when you're it, when you're on the podcast the, the few times you have been I think that you you've you've shown more of your true character. But again, it's it's all it's all part of it, you know. It's, I think you sometimes I don't want to call it a shock value thing, but it's it's, <laughs> it's you know you like to you like to kind of catch people off yeah stir the pot catch people off guard sometimes be a little bit more random you know what I mean and and and, and that's fine because it does somehow um, it has if you will when it comes to this I'm not even talking about the years we've known each other because you know it is different seeing you comment on there and I, I appreciate everyone like. Um, Seku's, you know, really driving a conversation between, you know, Buffalo Trace and Blanton's and Eagle Rare. That's all part of this this podcast. So if you're listening to the audio only, you you hear it, you know, us bringing in part of the, the, the comments, part of the conversation, because the, the community, the the whole part of this is something a little bit different where it's not just a a formulated podcast, not just a formulated thing. I mean, talking about, I mean, we, we have not had this Four Roses before. It's not something that we... We were like, all right, let's have a drink before and let's talk about it. Hey, all right, let's light up the cigar. And like, this is round two. This is all very much raw and very much just honest conversation. So I, that's what I like about you, Bobby, and having you on here and having you on, you know, from Texas, wherever you are. I like having you a part of it because you do have the, the, the biggest part about it is that there's effort there. And I think that's 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 not said enough is that people's participation in anything is, is not uh, it, it's not given the credit it, it, it needed it's needed i i appreciate that because at the end of the day i my i have good intent even if it might not be on there because i do want to give a oh, it's on there it, I, I i know but at the end of the day it's that's why your podcast is different because your intent and how you communicate with the people and how you just stack between everything and how you have your good group of people i mean we do we i mean do. you guys don't see in the background i mean there's always someone here and they're all having a great time and either laughing or we're saying something dumb and they might be shaking their head no at me, but I know they're laughing <laughs> right now because at the end of the day, I mean, that, that it's family. It goes back to yeah. the one thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's community as well. It, it's community. It's, it's like I said, this cigar, I love it because I love being <laughs> here with you. And right. the opportunity for me to be here now, it makes you appreciate it more when you don't even live in the state. And that's th- a good, that's, that's an interesting point. And so like, maybe you haven't seen me as the comments as much, right? Or you might see me die down a little bit because with time and age, people mature surprisingly sometimes. Some. Sometimes it could be reverted back, reverted back. But the, at the end of the day, it's. No, you, you're right. It, you, you don't want to outcast somebody from a community or because they have a different opinion because they can always still bring value. That's Absolutely. Right. That's right. <clears throat> so. As, as, and I that's really I appreciate you sharing that. I mean that that's absolutely right, and that's how I, I view a lot of this the same way. As far as part one, before we go more and like, that's the thing about it too is that this this podcast obviously like it, it breeds into another conversation. And it that's always what, does. You know, doing the the, the community part. Um, with this, let's let's kind of do a summary for part one. Okay, four roses, super premium. What do you guys? I mean, would if this was available at the Kroger down the street? For forty bucks, <laughs> oh, definitely picking it up. You'd pick it up, absolutely. I would have it as a daily. You would have this as a daily. I would have it as that's, that's a that's a big one, and and that's a lot for me because I probably have over five hundred bottles at home. Jesus, um, <laughs> and for me, it's, you do need to drink more. I, but <laughs> yet again, it's like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, it's one of those things where I enjoy this, like you know, and this is going to be a very unpopular opinion. I love mixing my drinks with some of these, not doing it straight sometimes. Mixing it how? Like like cocktails or with like yes. Coke or Sprite or? Cocktails or any of those. Even okay. like, a, like a bourbon mule. 
Right. Yeah. Bourbon meal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you'd be surprised. I know people are like, whoa, that's forbidden. Like, especially when I was in Ireland, they literally laugh at me. Like, what are you doing with your Jameson? Go to hell is literally what they tell me. Really? Because they, they drink it straight in Ireland. They, it's like a, a sacrilegious. But what I find is when you have a more premium whiskey or a bourbon and you do those cocktails, it does bring out those flavor profiles, just like yeah. how you're smoking it with a cigar. So I would have this as a daily. Yeah, well, I mean, if you know, if this was available here, yeah, I could definitely see where this is something, you know, after you've had a, a few pours of it neat or, you know, maybe ice or a little bit of water, however you like your bourbon, uh, this is definitely one that, like, after you've had it, it's like, okay, let's see what I can do with it, you know, in a Manhattan, in an old-fashioned, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And, think- and, and see how it changes. With this, yeah, I mean, it's light enough that you you mm-hmm. can mix it. I mean, I think if you throw ice cubes in this, you're gonna lose you're gonna lose a lot. Of I, I think I think you're gonna lighten it up so much, you're gonna take I, away from it a little. I bit. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, because you got the oil in this. It's gonna stay. That's in there. true. It's, it's very know. oily. It, the viscous is different. Well, if you pour more into my glass, I'll put a little bit of water. <laughs> you can drink as much as you want. At the end of the day, I don't want to take a bottle home with me. I want it to be enjoyed with all of us here. That's amazing. All right. So. Um. So everyone's gonna, and I would agree with that. Is I, I would say if this was on the shelf for for forty, yeah, I'd be love some more. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if it's forty bucks, uh, I would. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he just gave you the same kind of pour Miguel gave me. Yeah. Of that diplomatic at the end of the night. A little while, I think, or better. Um, yeah, I would say so. Th- it's interesting. I would I would stack this up against anything else on the four. Ro- like when it comes to the single barrel, the small batch, what I see on the shelf on a daily basis. If this was here, uh, net, like between those two or on one side or the other, it, it's yeah, it's it's something that I would be able to grab instead of or in addition to any of those. I like how it, the album's actually showing now. <laughs> it is a pretty <laughs> bottle. It's a pretty <laughs> bottle. Uh, cigar. So call it ten bucks. Bobby, what do you think? Take 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 away. Let's be objective on this one. Take away any of the uh, the the memories or anything else. What do you think of the cigar? You just took another draw. Nate, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, pass. That's his answer. It's pass. <laughs> Hard pass. All uh-huh. right. No. For, okay. So for a $10 smoke, uh, this is extremely enjoyable. Uh, one of the things I like about this cigar is just even taking just one puff on it, like there's a ton of smoke that comes off this cigar. I get a thick cloud of white smoke when I take a draw on this cigar. And I love I that. I think yours is constructed different than mine. <laughs> Or you suck harder. I don't know which. Easy. <laughs> Easy there. Jess, why are you looking at your phone? <laughs> um, Jess is not no, complaining. But, <laughs> but no, it's it's got a it's got a like I like the flavor of this cigar. I yeah. I see where you were coming at earlier, Steve. You know, it it's a cigar that pairs better than smoking on its own. But I think I, I think this is a good cigar, you know. Maybe as a first cigar of the day or second cigar of the day, you know, working retail, you know, on a Saturday when we're there all day, yeah. uh, you know, you know, we may end up smoking four, five, six cigars in a day. You know, this is a good cigar to smoke, I think, in the middle of the day, uh, because your your palate's still going to be available and open to tasting other flavors on your cigars. Right. Um, it, it it's got a lot going for it. You know, the construction's good, the flavor's good. It's just an all around very enjoyable cigar. There's nothing that stands out and would, and would make this, you know, be, you know, be like, oh my gosh, this is one of the best cigars I've I've ever had. And, you know, like the Le Bijou, uh or something like that. But it's just it's just a gr- it's a great cigar in the sense that it's constructed well, it burns well, it tastes good. Just it 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 checks all the boxes of what you want a cigar to be. There's there's no there's no negative that I have about this cigar. It's just good. I guess Fair. has it smoked differently between the three stages and how it pairs with the uh, with the bourbon to you? No, it, it's been to me this cigar has been very uh, consistent. It's not a very complex smoke. It, to me, on my palate, it doesn't change. Uh, it's the same. You know, now that I have about an inch left of it, it's the same now as what it was when I lit up. It still has straightforward. It, yes, it has you know nice smoothness to it on the draw. Uh, you definitely you know taste you know medium body like I said earlier, and then it still has that spice on the retro hail, and you still taste that spice a little bit on the palate too. Get more of it on the retro hail, um, but it, it's it's just an all around 
straightforward cigar. They're you know they're not they're not trying to be fancy with this one. It's just a good smoke. And I think I think with this one coming in at that ten dollar price point, you know, compared to the Le Bijou, La Opulencia, or some of the other ones like that, you know, someone who doesn't want to spend twelve to fifteen dollars on a My Father, ten dollars on this cigar is kind of an entry to my yeah. father's cigars and it's a, it's a great smoke. It's not overpowering. It you know, the flavor's not overpowering, the spice isn't overpowering. It's it's just a good smoke. I mean, for me, I do agree with the thickness of the smoke on the when I actually like I actually prefer like hookah sometimes because right. hookah for me is I love the draw of the smoke. I love the different flavors that you can do with it. Um, and then you can literally do like different tricks, like blow the O's and all those things. So for me to get that thick smoke, no, Sweet, I mean, bro. for me, no, for me though, <laughs> not like that crappy, like electronic, you know, oils. <laughs> I'm talking about the old school, like Arabic right. pure hookahs. Okay. So let me clarify that for the listeners. I'm still going to make fun of you. You can. I don't I, care. I, I know, know who I am. And <laughs> I know who you are too. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's, I like how I can at least feel that normalcy between those two for me right. with that thick smoke, but anything mind blowing from it? No. Um, now do I, I guess for me, I, I guess I'm not, I'm not blown away by it. So like, I, yeah. So I'm, I'm with you on that. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm look at that. Like, see how, like, again, I think mine's just, maybe it's just a, a tougher draw on mine that that happens. Right. So two out of three, you guys have good draws. Mine's a little firmer. I, so it, I think of my father's stuff. And, and again, I have, some very favorite my father cigars. What? So I just took a drink of the Four Roses after putting a cap of water into it. I get so much more spice out of it now. Really? Told you. Yeah. Like it. Told opened, you. Like so. it definitely opened it up. It did not water it down at all. It opened it up, and there's a lot more spice going on now. As soon as I get about three more ounces or four more ounces out of the glass that Bobby poured me. They can see it on the camera, actually. I'm sorry. Do you want my bottle of water, Steve? There's, no, there's comments. Nice pour. Huge pour. Nice. <laughs> I mean, there's, yeah, it's it's apparent. I'm just trying to read the bottle think, because it's so hard to read yeah, because that's, that's of. It. No, I'll say, you know. <laughs> I Kylie some, just told you you need to suck harder on that. No, that was about you, actually. I think it was you. All right, maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 to, I told you it would taste better if you do like an ice cube or if you do distilled water for some of the. I think it's snobby when you put distilled water in there. Personally, that's my unpopular opinion. Also, it's not unpopular. It's just your opinion. It's my opinion. But at the end of the day, the ice for me, when it's that oily and it has that much of a leg to it, it literally brings so many different notes to it that I think you enjoy it more. Especially, how does that pair well now with the cigar? Well, I mean, I think it still pairs very well. I think adding that cap because it increased the spice of the whiskey so much i think now it's possible that that whiskey may slightly overpower this cigar and that's interesting with the, adding a little bit of water to it the cigar so if, what i was going to say is that with this being a my father product i think if this was so for those of you that my father makes products for other companies and, and one that's really more intertwined would be tatuaje mm-hmm. and then also latelier mm-hmm. um i would say that if this was a a surrogates from latelier and it was, and I know I'm 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 splitting hairs here, but if this was like eight to to nine dollars surrogate, and they had one of their names on it or whatever, whatever they want to call it, they have like the Animal Cracker, the Bone Crusher, uh, Skull Breaker, uh, cigars. Tramp Stamps, one of theirs. <laughs> That's the one I was getting ready to say. But I mean, it, it's 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 if this was one of theirs, I'd say this is a killer cigar for for surrogates because I like some of their stuff, but a lot of their some of theirs are a little more straightforward, and I don't know if it's I've, I've heard. From and I'm not going to like give away anything, but I've heard some of their blends are very, very similar to some of the My Father products, but they have a little less age on them. So uh, as far as the tobacco, or as long as they sat after they were rolled, whatever it is, whatever the rumors are, uh, whatever fact. But I think for for My Father product, I think for a ten dollar, ten ninety five My Father cigar, that's what you're getting. That's the two dollar difference, three dollar difference when it comes to that. And, and two to three dollars isn't much. But if you're if you're if you're looking at percentage wise, it, it is a a chunk. I guess for me, if this was a eight to nine dollar cigar, I think I would I I don't think it's worth that ten. I think it's an eight to nine dollar cigar. Personally, yeah, and again, to, to know, a lot of people I that might know. be that's that's splitting hairs because it's like oh, it's just not a dollar or two. And it's like again, I mean, that's just how the the market works. Much like a thirty dollar bottle versus a forty dollar bottle. 
You know what I mean? It's like, can I save 10 bucks and, and get something better or as good or something that I enjoy at least as well? That's where I look at it. So this is a good cigar. Construction-wise, mine was a little plugged. Your guys' are, are, are good. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of like build up at the end of it, and, and I think I have a good cut on there. Uh, the sheen on it's great. The, the, the packaging's great. I would say that this cigar is, is definitely something that I would, would smoke again. But again, for that price point, I'm going to grab something else. Even from the same company, I'll grab something else. And that might just be my palate. So How again, much is the BS? Because I always forget. Be a, uh, so ours is 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 nine ninety five for a Toro. If we had a, a size like this, it'd be eight ninety five. Because to me, like I said, because I've smoked a ton of the BS, right? And I really do enjoy the BS. I'm like, I'm not just like not playing not plugging away. it. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like I think that if I was going to choose between those between this, my father and the BS, yeah, I would pick the BS, non bias. Appreciate. No, that. I agree with that. I appreciate. I that. agree with that, and I because I think you get. That same consistency that you guys designed all the way through. And I think that I would in, to save another couple bucks. You know, if I was being a penny, you know what I mean? I, I think with the BS, especially with the silver that we have right now, um, I think the BS silver is people that like my father's cigars. I think the BS silver is what is similar to what they would expect from a my father. Because it's got a lot of flavor, it's got a lot of spice to it, and you know, definitely more so than what this does. Well, and I think, all right, before we go too for much farther, let's let, let's kind of get towards the end of part one. The, the BS Silver is going to be it's an Espinosa product. I think Espinosa, especially stuff that he's producing in La Zona, they have an easier draw. Which the other side of that is a lot of people would rather have a firmer draw. Hmm. smoking a cigar than they than have a little looser draw not saying that the bs silver espinosa products are going to be airy but they're going to be sometimes a little bit more effortless and i gotta be honest there's some people that that would rather have a little bit more of a firm draw and it's all smoker you know preference so uh so just just like fine. just like the whiskeys right i keep trying to bring the parallels back some people want more proof they want they want a little hotter they want a little bit more depth to the whiskey they don't want it to be a straightforward whiskey that they, they want it to be in their mind, a little more complex, and sometimes I think that is mistranslated to uh, being a little bit more uh, uh, in your face. Okay, you know, being smooth is is not always a good thing for some people because they're just like, ah, it's too too light, it's too easy. I mean, that makes sense, and that I I'm just trying to figure out what it compares to my palate that I can because I literally just smoked it on the way down from. Columbia. I mean, from the BS, yeah. So, I mean, I, I know what... Ecuador and Habano with Nicaraguan filler and binder, if that's just the the, the overall treetop level breakdown of, of a blend, I typically like it, which is why I like this cigar. But again, there's other ones out there that, you know, um, they, this has a little more... I, I'm thinking, again, my father. So, like, Tatuaje has that, that Tatuaje tattoo, and I think it's a similar makeup as far as treetop level, Ecuador and Habano, and then Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan. And, and that one's six ninety five for for this size. I think this is a little bit more to it than, than say, the tattoo. But, again, is it a $4 difference? I don't think so. I like this a lot more than the tattoo. To to me, the tattoo had a little bit of bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. You know what? And the reason why I ask those questions as you're closing up part one is because <laughs> – you No, know, I'm being serious because when you go into those details, a lot, a lot of the other podcasts don't do that. Really? To me because you actually make it easy for me to understand – well, it's yeah, because it's it's going to be something that again, treetop level stuff. Not everyone releases everything as far as the the blends of like where they're coming from and and you know what priming and and everything else and and, and what part of it uh, the planet comes from and you know what lot and all the details. Sometimes you can over inundate people with the details that you lose it. But yeah, no, we try to keep it a little bit more um, above board as opposed to just fully geeking out on it. Which which I appreciate some of the podcasts that go even further into the whiskeys, further into the cigars. This is more of your everyday, you know, getting into it, putting, you know, at least not just your toe into it, but at least, you know, getting the shallow end of it when we're not really diving into the deep end of either product. I think it's fun to learn while you're actually having a good time drinking and smoking it. So that's what I'm saying. Overall, for 10 bucks and $50 bottle or $40 bottle, how I got it, I think you can't go wrong either way. Bobby Hirschman says, "Not enough booze on the table." There's enough booze in my glass right now. So, I mean, just put um, the other bottle on the table. <laughs> well, we got other bottles in the garage. Between that bottle, what I got in my bag, between the other bottles donated for the podcast, That's I think plenty. we're good. 
Um, but I will say, so th- thank you, Bobby, for being here, and thank you, Nate, for 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 being a part of it again this week. Uh, Dustin for for holding it down on the uh, Facebook live feed, uh, and then also uh, Kyle B. Smith photo. That's at Kyle B. Smith photo. So any of the the photos that we put up there, we get a lot of compliments on those. That's his stuff. So if you need to. Uh, if you're in the Columbus area, especially, and you need some uh, uh, photos or need a photographer for something, whether it be an event, uh, something like this, definitely get a part of uh, the podcast and then reach out to Kyle Smith uh, directly or through us, and we'll put you in touch. And then uh, he's he is for hire. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors for part one. Again, it's going to be uh, Tinderbox at Easton for the My Father, La Gran Oferta. We've talked about that quite a bit, especially the second half of the, the part one. Also, Altidus USA, we've got some Buteras that I'm looking forward to uh, lighting up. We actually featured that one at one point on the podcast. I don't know which number, but if you scroll way back, I know we, we featured that one, gave a little bit of story on that one, so that's that's in the archives as well. And also BS Cigar Company. We've been talking about BS Cigars just because we all like them, and it is something that, that uh, we're a part of, and, and uh, we're proud of it, and we're expecting the BS Gold to be back on the market in March. So uh, stay tuned for part two. And thank you guys for, for listening. If you're on our Facebook live feed, don't go anywhere. Share the part two coming up here. I'm going to reshare everything for the topic time. And it's going to be uh, um, about comparison culture. We'll get into that here momentarily. And, Nate, you wanted to bring well, up. Real quick before we go you know, take our first break, um, uh, for Christmas, my lovely wife gave me this. Uh, it's called Kentucky Double. It is this uh, combination cigar ashtray and coaster i guess you could say that's right uh, they do uh they make it out of several different types of wood uh the one that she got me is uh cherry and on one side of it it's got uh an ashtray that is milled out of a uh, aluminum yep solid block of aluminum and then the other side it's got a real <laughs> nice genuine leather coaster so it's it's you know not gonna you're not gonna damage it by putting a glass on it it's got a nice horseshoe around it um and then they even have you know, a little leather travel case that it's you can put it in. Stuff, man. Um, and it it definitely takes up a lot less space than uh, you know having an ashtray and a separate coaster and all. Oh, that. It's, it's very nice. And yeah, did so, Kyle take a picture of that? I think Kyle took a picture of it. And so the guys at, at Kentucky Double, I will say, uh, just bought this for Nate for for Christmas. Yep. Um, I will, I will extend a challenge out there to them. If they have any interest in, in sponsoring the podcast, we'd appreciate it. But at the very least, if you want to send us a, uh, a, a Kentucky Double that we can, we can raffle off, whether through social media or uh, give it as a, a Patreon gift or, or basically like a, a contest or a random drawing for our, pa- our patrons on the Patreon page, I would love to do that. So uh, if you're listening, definitely um, – reach out to us that'd be great i think everyone out there would appreciate it and help uh, spotlight your your product even more and and we'll tag you on all the uh, social media and challenge you guys again got an audience so thank you guys very much part one is uh coming to an end here stay tuned for part two it'll be a uh, 99.2 on your uh, audio files that will be released the same same date as point one so thank you very much guys happy thirsty thursday merry christmas happy hanukkah to everyone out there Long cheers time. Uh, Merry Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. It was yesterday. It started yesterday. There you go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, we're going to take a, a, a break. We're gonna, I'm going to reshare this. Bobby, what, what do you think being back in the garage? I mean, any garage that has a sign that says Steve Garage on yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it just makes me feel at home. <laughs> Um, but you're not Steve. Oh, I don't need to be Steve. Okay. Um, it just it, it still feels like home because first off, to hear him laugh with his little ha 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 chuckle, it, it's just priceless. Do it's I like, have a little chuckle? I think so. All right. That's a deep bass chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So there you go. no. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Perfect impression. <laughs> Perfect impression. Hey. <laughs> So, I, Steve, what was the what was the coolest thing you got for Christmas? Uh, I would say oh, I got some really nice gifts. Uh, one that stood out because I'm a little freaked out by it is um, Liz's mom and stepdad. And I got a lot of great gifts, but Liz's mom and stepdad got us a uh, one of those like uh, Robo vacuum cleaners. iRobot. 
It's not an iRobot. It's uh, Deep Deepbot. No. Deepbot is the brand. I don't trust it. <laughs> I don't trust it. That would be saying it all the time because like it kind of got stuck <laughs> bef- before you guys came over. She was showing me it, and it's like it kind of got stuck in our hallway and front foyer. So that that part, which is good when podcast nights, but on, that's very very much vacuumed in that area. <laughs> right there. No, I would I would not want that. I would not want that. I I, I saw a story today that there was a, a couple that woke up in the middle of the night and heard something banging around in their house and. They called nine one one because they thought there was an intruder in their house and it was their damn Roomba <laughs> vacuuming the, the floor. It, yeah, that's I don't trust it. <laughs> Plus, it knows the layout of the house. <laughs> oh, and it's sending all that and, to you know Google and all yeah, and Facebook. So, they know, they know the layout of your house now. They know the layout of it. It's probably it's probably got microphones in it. You know what I mean? And, and then on top of that, it works with Alexa and Google. It doesn't work with the does Apple it clean stuff. the house. Again, so far it's cleaned. Uh, like she had it in the kitchen, and it, it'll learn. You know, I mean, obviously we're cleaning up after the holidays, and Liz, thank, thanks to Liz. Did you ever think about getting a, a baby gate? I heard that story that yeah, one of those things basically like was cleaning, and, and like uh, an animal had taken a shit right in the, <laughs> like the kitchen floor or whatever, and then that basically was carried on throughout the entire house. So yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I'm not. I don't trust it yet. It's a cool gift, and, and thank you to to Sarah and Pete for getting it. But uh, it kind of scares me. Bobby, she wanted to name it, and I said, "Can we just call it the vacuum?" And she said, "Oh, Mister Vacuum, that's it." I was like, "I don't want." As soon as you start naming robots no. in your house, like Alexa and Siri and all that shit, like <laughs> it. That's how it starts. Call it not calling it Mister Belvedere. Call it Mister Clean. No. That's already taken. It's a great man. <laughs> already talked about. Was it. It, how Eugene? about Scott Mays? <laughs> All right, I'm sharing this. Bobby, what about you? Show what that was... to me later. Show that to me later. I can hear it. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, what uh, what's everyone smoking and drinking out there as we get into this? I'm sharing uh, topic time to all the groups here, and I encourage everyone to do much the same. Dustin, what you had? You had the mic. You want to say something here while I'm doing this? I already passed that. Bobby, what'd you get? That was really cool. I mean, what I got was to go to Japan. That was part of your Christmas? That's a good gift. That's a good gift. I mean, it was my birthday on Thanksgiving, so it was okay. perfect. I got to celebrate in Japan. Um, I mean, I've been very uh, blessed that my wife and I have been able to, you know, be able to do what we are able to do, um, especially still having our house in Ohio and having our place in Dallas and still traveling back and forth and just getting it right. Um, So, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm still working on my house, even though I'm here. Um, I got done doing all the kitchen cabinets. I got done. Which looked very nice. Thank you. Um, I also just got done uh, putting the two new bathrooms together. Um, So it's just been, it's, it's been a very challenging 2019, but challenging in a good way because it opens up your eyes of what you really can do right? versus just sitting on your butt pr- pretending what you could do. Like, I, it's been, no, I absolutely. have to be in action all the time. So, um, I also, like, usually I buy all my cousins and, ne- like, nephews and nieces all presents. Um, but this year I did it differently. I bought them all candy because I wanted them to be, like, Hyper for their parents. And then just crash. And crash. That's but no, I actually bought all their toys and donated to Toys for Tots. And then with my work, um, I volunteered three days at Toys for Tots in Dallas and helped get all that organized and probably did over packaging over like 800 boxes so they can get those shipped out for the needs. That's amazing. For the yeah, needs. So nice. it's, that was very rewarding. I, I don't know if anybody else, I mean, I'm not. A f- I always was negative to donating my time. No, I really was. I'm like, who cares, right? But like, it, it was different because when I actually was there, you you knew you're doing it for a reason, and you actually felt good. And I I encourage, even if it's a shelter for puppies or whatever you're passionate about, donate your time, just like how you're donating your time for the podcast, right? Because you start learning more about yourself and what to appreciate, and you don't need to have all those gifts just because of a holiday. Mm-hmm. And that's I just live every day like it's a holiday. That that's how I've been doing it this year at least. That's how you live your life. Some days. 
<laughs> Before we get into Se- Seku has been uh, listening for a while, and I think a uh, new, new listener. Seku, just uh, if you could comment uh, where you're from. I know Bobby Hirschman's on. He says there can't be two Bobbies. I was the original. <laughs> There's none other like you. Uh, and and Seku is smoking an LFD suave and, and drinking Zagapa 23, which is fantastic. I, I do like Zagapa 23. Yeah, Miguel yeah. brought that on uh, one time when he was on. Yeah, and I, I gifted, uh, or we gifted um, Liz's dad, the uh, uh, Diplomatico that I really liked that, that Miguel yeah, brought on that was, last that time. that was yeah. great. We killed that bottle. I actually, when I was in Japan, I was staying at, it was in Hokone, which is like near Mount Fuji where they have natural hot springs. Mm-hmm. And um, I went, it was a very bougie hotel. And it was really cool because when I went downstairs, they had this wonderful bourbon and whiskey collection. Nice. So when I literally walked up to the bar, because it's actually really frowned upon when you get up from your table. To Interesting. Because like, like, oh, look at the menu, order it. Like, yeah. I mean, all transactions, you put your money in a little like, like tray. And then in that tray, you didn't pass it over because they don't. It's disrespectful just to hand money. Yeah. Straight to anybody in Japan, or in a, like Asian culture. So, um, but the guy was like, "Oh, he's obviously I'm a dumb American, right?" So, but he really appreciated it, and I I think Miguel would actually appreciate this one because they they actually make this rum and they bring the uh, the the barrels from Kentucky. Really. And they did this. It's called. Um, Angel, it's not Angel. Um, what's it called? I'll I'll think of it here in a second. But the rum was it tasted like a, um, a bourbon because of how the cast were. Yeah. And I know if Miguel had it, he would be like, "This is absolutely be a amazing." Crossover there. Oh, well, he would. I think that it would have just blew his mind away on nice. that episode. So. Nice. Uh, next time, I'll make sure I bring some. If Miguel, we'll when you come that, back yeah. on, I'll make sure that I give it to Steve so you guys can. I want to hear your judgment of it because I know you're particular about your rum. He very much so. <laughs> uh, w- real quick before we uh, we we start part two here, we have uh, a couple special guests by way of Indianapolis. Can you just uh, come over here, Jake Sanders? Yeah, we can pull up a chair if you want. But you better on, bring Nate? up a chair. Am I on? Am yeah, I you're good. On. <laughs> Welcome. No, you, welcome to you. I know. Yeah. I need your dapper self right by me. It's this is awesome, guys. It's always fun coming back here. No, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Bring Merry up Christmas. a chair. Bourbon and BS Alicia. podcast episode ninety nine. If there I can't know. have my arch nemesis by me, I'd be very right. Sad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's have let's jump into part two. Bring up a chair. Yeah. If you want to scoot in, we can yes. we can definitely make room your, for you. Get your butt over here. Where do you want to sit? I'm by? Not sure how we're gonna do it with this angle here. It doesn't need to be. Just tell me where. I'll move to the left. And you can sit, you can sit right here. Yeah, take a, take a folding chair here. I'll just grab the <clears throat> Yeah, slide the bag just real right. real gently and try to make sure it's level there. Let's try to do this I here. Too much in your bubble. You drink that, will you? That's from before. <laughs> yeah, it's just belt Facebook Live, right? sorry, we're making a little bit of adjustment here. You don't have to. Really. I got you. It wouldn't be an episode of... Here, grab your cigar like there, last will you? Time, what was grab it? your jo- cigar. Didn't Josh come... That last time? Last time you were on. Yeah, apparently people like to add themselves in when you're on there, Bobby. I, I prefer it. It's family. Uh, we're a little crooked there. <laughs> Must be on a fault line. Can <laughs> <laughs> you said that? I'm going to finish that one. Oh, you're all right. Can you get in there? I'm all right. I'm all right. I know you're all right. I'll sit. You, you missed this. You gotta, we gotta yeah, we got to give him a glass, too, please. No, I mean, that... <laughs> just Bob, Bobby Hirschman. We're, <laughs> stop calling him Bobby. That's his name. <laughs> okay. Kyle, can you can you level that out, please? Either Steve's side needs to come down, or my side needs to come I up. I can see it from there. There you go. There you go. It's so Beautiful. Weird That's that much better. I can see it from here. It's so weird that you guys are having four roses. I know. We that. talked about that, yeah. Why is it weird? Because Al Young died. <laughs> yeah, we oh, yeah, talked we about that earlier. Yeah, yeah we That's didn't plan. Crazy. Yeah, we mentioned that. Um, uh, Scott GK had brought that up. Yep, yep. From how old, how old was he? Well, he'd we... been working with them for fifty years, so yeah. I'm assuming he oh, wasn't a spring I chicken. I bet he was. Yeah, I bet he was close to ninety. Yeah, I, there you go. Yeah, he's still 80s loving, to nineties. Yeah, still loving bourbon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, <clears throat> now that we got Jake at the table here, and we got the wide, handsome lens on. I need one more ring to match. Bobby, there. You need about five more rings <laughs> to match Bobby. You're, you're a lion. Oh, I Put got the, the, lion. the pinky right, ring. All right, let's 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 get back on task here a little bit. Now that we have uh, Jake Sanders on, go ahead. That doesn't fit. 
Welcome back. It's your pinky. All right, gentlemen. Well, welcome back to uh, the Bourbon and BS podcast. This is episode 99. This is episode 99.2 for those who are on the audio. Uh, I want to start with... Um, I don't know what's going on outside my house. But I want to start with uh, our, our sponsors. So thank you, uh, Tinderbox at Easton. We, we smoked in part one. La Gran Oferta from My Father Cigars. Listen to part one if you guys are uh, on the audio side of it and not checking out the video or, or Facebook Live. Uh, we have a review of that as well as we're still sipping on Four Roses Super Premium. That is by way of Bobby Crow, by way of Japan. So it made its way across Thank the world. Thank you, Japan Airlines, for letting me get that across. <laughs> and uh, we have Nate Hale as well on here with Bobby. That's awesome. Who was a part of uh, part one and part two here. And then we also have... Uh, uh, Jake Sanders back in the garage for the holidays, which we appreciate. Want to thank uh, Altus USA. I'm smoking. I just lit up the Butera, the uh, Royal Vintage Butera. So we we featured that a year or so ago. Long it's been a while. Podcast. And uh, it's a great mild to medium cigar. I'd say more mild, but very creamy. So thank you, Altus USA, for for sponsoring us again. As always, and then also BS Cigar Company, which we have a couple of BS uh, Silvers around. Want to mention uh, for the point uh, two listeners, and sorry for the broken record for anyone that's on the Facebook feed, but uh, we want to thank our, our patrons on the Patreon page. So patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. We've got a handful of sponsors so far. We've been talking about it that we're going to be doing some more uh, gifts. So I, I mentioned in the first part of the podcast. If you're waiting for us to say, hey, if you do a $5 tier, $10 tier, whatever it is, you'll be getting these gifts. Anyone that's on there, so the first uh, handful that we have right now, and anyone that uh, chimes in when, and, and contributes to that page, once we get the, the, the shirts or anything else that's going to be happening in the first quarter, hopefully, we will, uh, we will extend our gratitude to you guys uh, and, and make sure that you get that for being a part of it even before we started doing those those tiers. So thank you to everyone that's a part of that, and hopefully you guys want to contribute as well. Bobby, thanks for the whiskey. Uh, we also have a new addition that if you are just listening to po- uh, part two, we want to thank Avi for um, helping out, and, and he says he's not comfortable with a, uh, a monthly subscription type of uh, support, so he donated a, uh, a MacBook Air uh, because he We'll was- take it. <laughs> because he Damn. Was, because he was tired of uh <laughs> not, no we we took a trip actually to see you Jake uh back when you guys had a soft opening and we're talking you know just about the podcast cuz that's how we've actually become uh closer friends is is talking through the podcast and him coming in but we drove out to Indianapolis and and then he just texted me a, a week or so ago he says hey what what was that MacBook Air we were talking about on the ride out and I said <laughs> Oh yeah, it's 2011. You know, it was one of the first ones they did. It works all right. I'd highly recommend it. He's like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "Wait a second. Why are you asking?" And, uh, so <laughs> it's a loaded he, question. It very much was. And so, thank you, Avi, for um, supporting the podcast. That's going to make things a lot easier when I'm I'm posting and editing and everything else. So that that's that's amazing. So way above and beyond. So uh, thank you and thank you to everyone that we've got some some guest bottles waiting on the shelf. Including another one from Bobby, the, the well just Joseph up Magnus. Out tonight. No, 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 no. That gets its own plenty episode. Of whiskey. We got a spot like that the one. Pen hook? That was a gift from Kumar. Um, that was that was my Christmas gift. So Damn. I'm, gonna, I'm going to donate that to the podcast uh, in an upcoming episode. <laughs> All right. So much changes. <laughs> Change energizes no, no, no. us. <laughs> so um, I, I want to say we're talking tonight. We're talking about the the topic is comparison culture tonight jake wow nate you you were the one that kind of brought this up you, jess your, your lovely wife was the one that that offered this topic on the uh, the bourbon and bs community page so so what are you thinking when it comes to this topic or, or jess you know when she, when you guys talked about this what, what's your guys's frame on this well I, I thought it was a good topic for this time of the year being christmas you know yesterday was christmas um you know people getting gifts and you know you know, saying what they want and all that kind of stuff. And um, her idea behind this as a topic, and she didn't she didn't suggest this topic to be done at Christmas time. I, I just thought it would work well. It's very fitting. Um, but her her idea behind it was our col- our culture right now seems to have a tendency to where with social media and everything that we follow and everything that we see on social media, like we want to try and – we want our lives to, to mimic what we see on social media. And part of the problem with that that uh, that she had 
was we want our entire lives based on this one snapshot of someone's life. Like, we don't know what that person's got going on in the rest of their life. They're just posting something good, something positive, or, you know, something that they have that is nice. And we want to compare ourselves to that. And there's kind of a negative uh, to that, whether it's material possessions, whether it's how much money you make in your employment, whether it's relationships. There's a lot of stuff that we always seem to be comparing ourselves to other people and there's a there's positives and negatives to that okay and i I think we look at the positives and well you know this person like if you're looking at people that work out all the time it's like oh you know i want to look like that maybe that's a motivation for me to you know get in the gym and work out and look like that that's great but there are some of those you know you see someone posting a picture of you know say they have an expensive car and, you know, they post a picture of it. Well, they may have rented that car for a day okay. just to be able to post that picture. But we see that, and sometimes it causes us to, you know, want that same thing, even though that may be above our means. It, you know, it, so that's that's kind of where she was coming from when okay. she came up with that idea. I mean, so there's, I mean. It, so mostly it's, that, focused on social media, basically, is what you're saying. Well, because that's how we see a lot of time. I mean, not just social media, but, you know. Remember the show MTV Cribs? Appearances, just typical yeah, appearances. appearances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MTV Cribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so there's all this. You know, there's there's TV shows about it now. You know, to where you, you know, it's think think of the old show Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, but it's now twenty four seven. We see that it's all the time. Yeah, and, between and, Snapchat, between any type of yeah, but it's it's caused us as a society to, you know, want those things. And I think sometimes when we're always striving sometimes for those things that may not be realistically attainable, we we forget to enjoy what we do have. Okay. Because a lot of us, what we do have is better than what a lot of other people have. Well, I yeah. think, yeah, so you're comparing basically going up. And I think you, you, what you said, your Christmas time or, or the holidays, but Christmas is a prime example, especially, you know, when, when there's kids involved, which which – None of us have kids on this panel, but you know I, I can deal with at least with my my niece and nephew, and they're they're not in any way. I mean, I don't want to say spoiled or not spoiled, but they 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 go without wanting. You know, my brother's family they, they're doing well, and, and at least well enough that you know when Christmas comes around, he's very um, financially responsible, and so they do get a lot of gifts. And I think uh, some of them, it's interesting to see them kind of grow. Uh, Evan, my, my nephew is, I, I want to say nine. And then my, my niece Morgan is, is 15 and a half, almost 16. So all she can think about right now is, is driving obviously. So right. now she's thinking about, and, and they're going to, they're going to basically hand down a car and then get another one. And it's like, I give her some shit sometimes, even at the holidays about like, we didn't have that. You know what I mean? Like we, <laughs> we, we, we didn't like we, she's like, well, you drove, you know, that, that big car. I was like, yeah, that was my dad's car. You know what I mean? And, and it was not cool to drive. I just really liked it. And we had to make sure that I could drive it when he wasn't needing it. Like, this is just not what. But she goes to a school, Columbus Academy, which is a private school that, you know, there's 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 her, her peers are are, I would assume, all getting cars when they turn 16. So there's that part of the comparison culture. Same thing with Christmas. Like, what's on your Christmas list? I'm surprised that they're not full blown just going for big gifts, but I mean they they have their interests, which I like. But I mean that's a time where it's that I, when I think of the comparison culture, it's that that phrase of keeping up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm. You know, who do you go to school with? Who do you work with? You know, what do they drive? You know, what are they wearing? All that stuff. The one thing I like about Columbus Academy going to a private school for them, and I would hated it. I would have hated it as a kid, but they wear uniforms, so there's a little bit of that equalizer there. That it's right. not like you're going to school the next day with. You know the the fancy, you know clothes, the jeans, the sweaters, and all that stuff. Jewelry, maybe I don't know what they're allowed to wear, but I mean she she got uh, t- I don't Tory Birch is that is that right? Alicia, Jess, yeah, okay, Dustin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's but I mean, called it's like, flossing. It, they're flossing. They're flossing. But I mean, I think there is that Christmas is a great time to talk about it because I mean that's that's a time where. Everyone's buying gifts, and it's like, yeah, you can get things that they need or the things that they want. But I mean, I think that's a good time to bring it up. Me? 
of course. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> You're always flossing. Look at that hat. I, I'm not the. I don't do the dance thing. Um, <laughs> I I really like this subject, Nate and Jess. I, I think it's I think it's interesting, especially at this time, because um, you know I remember when Instagram was coming becoming popular. Um, my school, you know, each school, um, in you know 2010 and up to 2013 when I was in high school, everybody was my, they each had their big platforms. Like in, in my high school was Instagram. So Christmas time was a big time where everybody, you know, post their gifts and what they got and stuff like that. And some people got, you know, you'd see someone's family and they had like two or three brothers and they had this massive tree in their big living room. And it was, you know, basically presents to the ceiling, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. And they're all bows and gold wrapping paper and stuff like that. And, and that's cool. And of course, like, you know, even being in high school and being younger, you always have a, I don't know, you, you always have a sense of, you know, I, I want that because entitlement. no, <laughs> but, but you, you know, you, you want that. And I think that I don't think it's entitlement, but what I think is when you're younger, everything's now like, you know, the, the older that you get, you realize time has a action, it, you know, each day is just a fraction of what your lifetime is like I, I you know I look back at like how I used to think uh you know when I was just because it's a little closer to me than it is to you guys but like I think back to when I was in elementary school and middle school when it was like Hollister was a big thing or um Air Apostle or American Eagle and stuff like that and if you didn't have like the little freaking red bird on your shirt then like you weren't somebody or yeah you'd if you like Lacoste or or whatever yeah yeah I think when I was in school it was Tommy Hilfiger jeans yeah that's terrible <laughs> <laughs> did you have Tommy Hilfiger no but I do now oh. just because usually come I come a long way well just because usually I get them at the TJ at, Maxx no <laughs> No, go down There's to nothing the, wrong with TJ Maxx. There's no, no, you go, can find a lot of no, great. Stuff. No, go to the outlet malls and try and find them on the seventy five percent off rack. There you go. Yeah, there you go. But I, I think for me, this I don't know. Th- this topic speaks to me because I think what it you know it's easy for all four of us to you know say certain things about this topic because all four of us have our own identity and we're and we're fine with it. For someone that hasn't discovered their identity or who they really want to be or what they want it's it's they're very impressionable when it comes to looking at something on instagram or looking at the kardashians or you know whatever you know i i think it's easy for us to sit around this table and say well this is the way that you should look at it because we all have like our own styles we all have we're all pretty comfortable in our own skin but for someone that you know there it wasn't very long ago where i wasn't very comfortable in my my own skin and you know, I, I want this, I want that, I want that. And I want my life to be like that because that's what I see. And that's what I think that that's how life should be until, you know, you get outside of that realm and, and get outside of Instagram and social media. And you start actually thinking for yourself and figuring out, well, what do I really want? What do you want my, you know, what do I want my style to be? What do I want my life to be? What do I, what are my passions, you know, that I want to basically, you know, let my job become. So, well, I think the biggest thing is that you guys are talking about, I don't, I think it's, it's something that with, you know, it's cribs and, and, and <laughs> Kardashians and social media and all that stuff. Nate, you mentioned something and, and Jake used to mention this quite a bit, you know, when you have like the influencers on social media or on TV and all that <laughs> stuff. And you see these people that are, you know, standing in front of cars, they're, they're living in these big houses. It's like, you don't really know the backstory there. You don't like you, you mentioned like, oh, they ran in the car for the day or whatever it is. It's like, that's, that's, that's what they're doing. Like, that's fine. Like, but for the people that actually have the money, like the, the MTV cribs, the lifestyles rich and famous, what, what people always seem to forget is cause I look at it as like, yeah, I would absolutely love to have that. I also would love to have the money to do such things. I'd love to be able to vacation. I'd love to be able to, you know, go into a store and buy a five hundred dollar bottle of, of bourbon. You know, right. I'd love to be able to have a walk in humidor at my house. You know, I'd love to have a bigger house. I'd love to have all that stuff. But one of the things that that I've dialed back in my life is that there's certain things that I I do want that I I, I realize that it's all within reason. There's a perspective there. Like you got to figure out how to make more money. If that's what's important, not, not making money is important to you. I mean, some people it is, but I'm saying if you want those things, if you want to take a vacation, you, you, 
you have to do the old school way. And Nate, that's one of the reasons I, I like the fact that you're on this podcast because we talked about it. We've talked about it several times is that it's not just a matter of having the line of credit to be able to do certain things. You know, it's not, right. you know, the, the, the culture that we have now is that, you know, if you want a car or if you want a house, it's like, all right, what's my monthly payment? And that's the, the way of the world now. But when you look at some of these other things, it's like you have to be able to save. You need to be able to like if you want you want something else, you need to get educated. You need to do the, the legwork you have to do that. We've talked about on the podcast in, in, in months past and in, in all 99 episodes that you, you have to actually put yourself out there and grow. It's not necessarily a tomorrow thing. You know, the reason that. You know, the Kardashians have all the money is there's a lot of different reasons. It's not just one product. It's not just one TV show or episode. There's family history there, too. But that's what I was mentioning about, like, the time frame. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, You're you, absolutely well, right. As you get older, there's definitely a sense of time where you understand. That, I disagree with that. So so what would you say? You think that is entitlement? No, I don't think it's entitlement. It's 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 at the end of the day, regardless if you're young or older. Right. I think. Every person goes through seven different types of passions through their life. Seven. Because seven. at least seven. Okay. Because you change. You change what you want through each stage or whatever stage you've gone through. Why seven? Because think about it. I mean, when you're younger, you're a kid. You're thinking about people, what toys they have or what right. your friends are doing. You're comparing it to your environment around you, right? So you're comparing that environment. And then you're in high school. Maybe you moved. When you're in high school, so it's a whole different environment, right? So then after you move to your next high school, then you go to college. Say you didn't like that college, you go to a different college, and that's a different environment. Then you have your different jobs, and then you kind of already built your personality by then. You know who, somewhat of who you are, at least some type of foundation. And then depending on your age, if you want to say age, because age doesn't really – I don't care about age at the end of the day. Stage think, in life. It's just your stage at that point because every, right. just because I'm 33 – and there's a kid that's in Ethiopia that's 33. He's had a different stage in life than I have at 33. He's probably had he he, he <laughs> an extreme pro- example. Yeah. No, no, but that's the thing. It's fair. It, everybody has an extreme. Everybody has an excuse. Everybody has a a struggle or whatever that is. Right. And so if they want to live it through fo- social media or if they want to live it through, you know, keeping with the joint is like what through the sixties, like, Oh, my neighbor had a lawnmower. So I have to get a lawnmower. They had a sprinkler system. Now I need a sprinkler system or I need a pool. I mean, every, <laughs> no, that's how it was back in the I, day. Yeah. I think it's still that way. It's right still now. that way. Yeah, it always, it, it's still that way within reason, depending on how you raise or how you were raised. Well, I, no, I think, I think you're, you're going big, right? So, how many people in, in, in out there listening and <clears throat> show of hands in the garage? How many people have an iPhone in this garage? Well, I have a an smartphone. Uh, that, that, I have an answer SE. The, uh, answer the question. I have an, I have an SE. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but I work at Verizon. I have two smartphones. Point point being is that these there are certain things that become. I buy my phones used. That's all right. <laughs> you're an anomaly nate no, like yeah, you don't do things that's, <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons you do things smart like the rest of us but should just because no, no, no. what you're class right. what you're classifying like, as smart that's that's how nate and how his family with justin just how he was raised and how he's done things he no done, it's it's not how i was raised it's how you do things though it's how i do things but with your family because, now with my family now because i'm not saying like like your immediate family yeah, right cause, now because because one of the things that one of the things that i heard that uh, has still stuck with us in the way that we live. If if you're constantly k- trying to keep up with the Joneses, you're going to be broke because there's always going to be someone who has something better than you. Okay, so you for me, right? The, I, there's always going to be someone richer. There's always going to be somebody who has something nicer or do something like this, right? For, so let's use my example for Japan, right? All right. So I, I apologize to some friends or I, when I talk to them, when I posted pictures online. Hey, did my pictures come off conceited? Because the last thing I want to do is actually like, oh. Could have done without the picture of you in the bathtub. Oh, you loved it. So um, I'm happy I didn't see that one. <laughs> at, at the end of the day. At the end Why of the, are you sending Nate pictures of you in the bathtub? Oh, no. He posted They're that on just on his regular Facebook perfect. page. Yeah. My wife I posted that. that one. Anyways. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. But. So for me, right, a typical trip to Japan typically runs about a thousand dollars to two grand per person for a flight there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So me, because I love, I get the, I am 
the one thing I'm always been good at and I will always be the best at, I don't care what anybody says, is I find the deal. Me and my wife travel to Japan round trip for $1,000 total. For the t- both of you? For both of us. Wow. So basically I, half off. More than that. I didn't book any of my hotels before I got there. I booked them when I was there. I went to hotel. That's taking a risk. No, it's not. How's it taking a risk? There's well, because well, you're but assuming there, there's going to be. Vacancy. And there was. I, 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 at the end, of, there's how many hotels in the world? How many hotels are in Columbus? There's dozens, at least. How many? With, <laughs> in the world? Yeah, I mean, at, like, least no, at least dozens. I mean, at in least. Columbus. In Columbus alone, there's probably over 100 hotels within like a 50-mile radius. You're telling me that they're all occupied? So there's literally things online like hotel.com or those things where I can get a deal where I was able to stay at a five-star hotel for $100 a night. So why do you think that it came across or you, you were apologizing? Why, why is Because that? at the end of the day, I don't want to – I do buy – Expensive things. I do like to do big things, but I. Okay. But I don't want it to think that oh, just because like my wife, she makes a lot of money. She really does. She, she does well. She does very well. And for me, like I, I my parents like I my mom raised me as a single mother before she remarried. Mm-hmm. Right. So I went through all the stuff of not having a car, not having a cell phone, or sneaking my mom's cell phone when she had it. Yeah. You know, I was a bad kid when I was younger because I was trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to have an image that was that. But reality is your, I realized that I was being fake to myself. So when did you, when, when when? did you realize that? I I think I realized it in college. Okay. It was a late, I was a very late bloomer in that sense. Hence my people actually uh, realize that much later than college. No, (laughs) but no, but I mean, I was a late bloomer in that sense of like, Oh, just do it or just X, Y, and Z. It's, you start realizing what the priorities are and what you want to do. So when you say, I want to travel more, okay, then redo your finances or cut your stupid Netflix account. Save a hundred, you know, 120 bucks a year or at least budget. It's just, yeah. people don't realize those things. So it, it, at the end of the day, it's, I don't think that you need to fake it to get there. I think you need to live it still to be able to understand that lifestyle that maybe you want or think that you do want, but those influencers help you discover who you are and you have to have that strong mentality for yourself to know if that's realistic at that time or if you're willing to take that risk to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Eric Evans says, if they know the real person you are, don't apologize for it. You don't seem as if you're throwing at people. But I was always criticized. So that's one of my weaknesses that I've always been criticized, Eric, right? So just because, yes, I am well aware. I'm very self-aware. I shouldn't have to. I, I apologize way too much because of how my actions as a kid, right? So, yes, do I need to work at it? Yes, I'm aware of that. But at the same time, I don't want it to be like I'd rather be able to tell the story of how I got there or be able to help you get if you want to go there. Not saying, like, I need to be a counselor or anything like that. I think people just don't realize what things are out there to take advantage of it. And so if I apologize, maybe it will ask those open-ended questions and be like, oh, how did you do that? This is how I did it. Yeah. And so – it's a kind of like a backwards way for me how I apologize because I just rather get the right point across and where well, you guys get to do it on a podcast. I don't do that. Right. <laughs> I don't, you get to have the community here. You're in the comments. I mean, I'm in the comments as sometimes if it's just speaking my mind, which I already said early in the episode, guys, like sometimes I don't even think about my comments. It's because that's who my personality is. I don't think right. I just react. Yeah. So that could be a very good thing. It could also be a very bad thing depending on who I'm speaking to. Seku says, ball out to your budget and sustainability, period. I like that. Well, yeah, I like that too. But here, here's my question for the table. Like we're talking, most of the things that we're talking about is like material things, right? But what happens when it comes to like, if you notice that someone has like a personality trait that you wish that you had, like, do you think that like this whole thing that we're talking about with comparing people in a general sense is a deeper thing then that's not that's not just materialistic things like lamborghinis is it like well do i want to budget better or do i want to like something that you're talking about like i want to be less uh or well what, what's one thing that you just said bobby about um not like working on being less self-aware is that what i gathered or not like i mean because i th- self-awareness is it get- 
Okay. So for me, at least I had this conversation with my uncle last night because he, he's very successful. Um, he's done, he came from nothing. And I think self-awareness, just because you're self-aware and most people are not a majority of the time, I think there's, there's extremes to every type of action. So if you're too self-aware, it can hold you back. Well, I think at that point you're self-conscious based on what you're saying. No, I'd, I'd I think say it's not self-awareness when you're, you're explaining to me, and I'm, I'm sorry to kind of jump in there, but I would say with what you were saying about posting pictures, I think that's a, like being self-conscious. I mean, I'm self-conscious to a sense because I want to make sure that with any audience that I have or any platform that I have, I'd rather know what the feedback is. It might be self-conscious. I, no, it I, is self I think you posted those pictures because you were happy about being there and you wanted to share it. I was happy of being period. there and I wanted people I've done to... That before. But I wanted people to be... To feel like... To see certain things through my eyes when I was there. Right. And... I thought people would... I know my fam, My mom loved it. My dad loved it. I didn't apologize to them. I apologized to... You know... And maybe it's because I have so many friends on Facebook right? that I don't know how everybody perceives it because you never know what one thing does to you gotta, another. You got to let that, that's that, that old thing of like letting the chips fall where they may because doing like this podcast, for example, like when Jake and I started this, it was, you know, and, and even the tinderbox for me when I'm doing like the tasty Tuesdays and stuff like that, it's out of my comfort zone, you know, taking selfie videos of myself, smoking something and talking to the camera and all that stuff. And, and, and I know that when I was doing the gym check-ins, you know, when I was doing like the, the focus check-ins and stuff like that, I got some, some flack from people, you know, like, oh, you know, like, I, like I'm not bragging, but like you trying to be someone I'm not. Yeah, I know. But it's like the same thing with this. It's when you're, you're doing the promo videos, when you're, you're, you're putting content out there, it's, it's ironic to me that the people that look at that, all this stuff the most are the first ones to say, like, I can't believe he's posting again. Oh, man, he's in Japan. Oh, he's posting pictures and all that stuff. It's like, you're fucking looking at it, and you don't put anything out on social media, but you absolutely enjoy it or at least spend way too much of your time on it, and then you don't put anything out there. So what are you going to look at if everyone does what you do, which is nothing? But what did you just say just on Twitter a couple – was a couple – a few days ago, Steve? Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes people are just bitter. I did, yeah. Like, I mean, it, there was, it doesn't yeah. really matter when it comes to – you know, if people are bettering themselves in some other way, like people are just bitter about it. So like to Bobby's situation, it's like the people, if, even if someone did say something, it's like, well, it's, you know, it, it matters. It's your social media. It matters what you're doing in your life. Like you're, you know, from my understanding of how like you came up, like you really didn't, have a lot either no, correct I, I so now you're taking trips to japan now you're you know sitting in the koozie and having f- fun and it's like why why be afraid of that it's not about being afraid i guess for me i'm working on being more empathetic personally i okay. think that patience and empathy are very two like two big character traits that have lost value in this society what? and and so for me with I, I watch a lot of Gary Vee, and not because, like, his self-help in that. I, I like how he communicates. It's the same message. It's not anything different from any self-help books or anything from the past, right? I think that when you're living it and you're doing it and you're being self-aware of your actions and your coworkers or your friends or your people, anybody, your environment, I think that you learn the most to actually try to put yourself in there not saying you need to dwell on it. I'm just saying that I'm being more self-aware. So if I'm saying sorry, maybe I'm not saying it correctly because how I interpret it, some words might be different ways how you guys interpret it, how I say it. I say sorry a lot too. Uh, Yeah, but I get it. But at the end of the day, it's if it's flossing or if it's, if it's, I'm buying this jacket because this limited edition, or if I'm buying bottles because of this, is this Filson? This is a double RL. It's nice. Um, yeah, it's the most expensive jacket I've ever owned, and my wife made me get it. It's a thousand dollars. All right, all right, that's nice. No, but it, but that's the thing. Like, it's real nice. Thank you. It, but it when you say that, people are drawn back. Like, wait, you spend a thousand dollars on a jacket? Like, it, it it can come off. Like, if you're working out, or you're saying that. Like, no, I, if you have it, then then it doesn't matter. But it, it it like I said, it's about being. I think you can't always. I've always assumed. 
I see where you're coming from. Though. I have always assumed I assumed what how people are going to act or react based off what I say. And, I'm very, and, and then what though? Like that's fine. You assume it, right? So, but you still put it out there, like you said, you're authentically yourself. So. I'm I mean, I'm authentically myself, but which is good. But I need to sometimes clean up those things to be able to mature more. I think I can give better value. I think I can make myself a better person with my community. And you're like me. You like contradict yourself. <laughs> two, two sides. <laughs> like that, a massive. Two sides of that. So that jacket, right? So you said it's a nice jacket, Jake, yeah. right? So yeah. here, there's two two different types of people. Right or three, right? One person says, "Hey, I really like that jacket. You know, like where'd you get it?" And you're like, "Oh, I got it here." What was it? What was it again? Uh, Double RL. I don't know what that means. Ralph Lauren. Oh, it's their it's their premium brand. Okay, so and I'm and, cool. and you say thank you. Yeah, you, but no, I but guess you I'm, say I'm, thank you. I, then you have the other person, and and you're 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 bearing your soul a little bit here. So you you said you almost feel not guilty, but you you're saying sorry. So there's a little like guilt, kind of in the fine lines there. But you're like. It's a thousand dollars, blah blah blah. There's the other people that are like, "Yeah, I got it on sale," and I'm, I, you, it was, it was ten dollars. Like, I'm like, either way, I'm just like, "Cool, it's a thousand dollars." Oh, cool, it was ten dollars. Like, I just said I like it. I didn't ask how much it fucking cost. <laughs> well, for me, because we're talking about, li- I know, I know, jo- but that's in this that, content. But, right but now. my point is, is that that's 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 part of it, you know. And, I, you, and how I respond to people because I've gotten a lot of compliments in Dallas and all those things. Like, I've gotten a ton of it, and I. I always say thank you. Yeah, it's really nice. My wife picked it out, and that's usually where I leave it. Subconsciously, for me, you feel I, guilty. Not guilty. Mm. It's not guilty. It's not because I love it. I love this jacket. I love how warm. You I look love. handsome. Thank you, sir. Um, it's just. You don't think so, Nate? At the end of the day, I, I don't want to be like, okay, I bought this one thing. Now I need to go buy another one. Well, there's there's a difference between. You know, buying a thousand dollar jacket and being like, you know what, I really like this jacket, and another thing, be like, hey, what do you think about my thousand dollar jacket? Right. You know, there, there's a difference between those. Like, yep. you, you know, one, you're sitting there saying, you know, I I really like this item. You know, whether it's whether it's a piece of clothing, whether it's a car or a house, like, I I really like this. And then the the other side is, look at what I got. Yeah. You know, flaunting it basically. Right. You know, there's a difference between those two. Like. You can appreciate what you have and being able, you know, to be in a situation where you can easily get those things. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the attitude behind it. Like, if you want to get that jacket so that way you can show off that you can afford a thousand dollar jacket, then you're a dick. But if you want to buy that thousand dollar jacket because you genuinely like that jacket and you have a thousand dollars to spend on a jacket, who fucking cares? No, and that and that I understand that, right? But for me, I you shouldn't apologize for you I, being he in knows, a, a he position knows. as I, good I'm, as you are to be able to to like that trip to Japan. Like when I'm looking at your pictures of your trip to Japan, I'm like, wow, you know. You good wish for, you were in the tub with him. No, God, why'd you? What? Why? Why would you? Lightening it up, man. What are you thinking? No, no, like when you're showing your pictures of your trip to Japan. I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing that Bobby and his wife have done well enough for themselves that they're in a position to where they can responsibly take a trip to Japan like that and do all the things that they wanted to do. Like, that's awesome. But here's the thing. You, you don't know that they did, right? Not, not take, take Bobby out of it, right? So you see these things. Like, so I see all that stuff. You're wearing a $1,000 uh, Which I never would have guessed. Whatever. Like, yeah, I... I one more time. The, the point is, no, the point is right there, right? So it doesn't matter what the, the cost is, right? So if, if the, the true thing is, is that if you find out that, like, you, you, you went out you went to Japan, right? So this is the mindset that when you're talking about the comparison culture that you brought up, Nate, is that what, what's changed, and I think Jake was talking about as you get older, as you, you it's not age or experience, whatever comes first. Mm-hmm. If I know that you went out to Japan and I know that I can't afford it, there's 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 two two trains of thought for me. I have enough credit and a good enough credit score that I could Liz and I could be out in Japan literally next week, like or tomorrow. But I mean I'm busy. But I'm saying like next week. But I know that then I'm gonna have to pay that off some somehow. So now it's the the mentality change of when you're talking about comparison culture when you're talking about all this stuff. It's the the driving factor. It's like so I want to go to Japan. I want to experience that. I don't know 
that person, Bobby in this case, but I don't know that person's uh, situation financially. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, you can see celebrities. We talked about celebrities earlier. It's like, how many of them go broke, and then you see them bankrupt at some point? Because, a lot of athletes. Yeah, they were making millions of dollars as far as income, but they didn't pay their taxes. They, they spent all their money. They lived beyond their means. doesn't matter if you're making $30,000 a year or $30 million a year. You can do the same thing. You can blow through your money. So, so my point is, is that it, what I'm striving to do anymore is that if I see something like that, if I want to go, like Ray Cheshire listens to this podcast, and he's been inviting me out to, to Hong Kong, now Vietnam, and he's like, that's oh, only a $1,500 flight. I'm like, to me, though, $1,500 <laughs> is something that, like, yeah, if I, you if I save start a savings that. right now just for a Vietnam flight for, for me and or someone else, now it's like, all right, so how much do I have to put aside every week or every paycheck that I can still, you know, I, I don't go out to the bar. I don't buy this bottle of, of booze. I don't buy these cigars. I don't, you know, whatever it is, you know, and, and my car doesn't break down or whatever, you know, like all these things. But I need to put, you know, $200 a month aside for this trip so that I can financially do it. And even then, when I get to that point, and it's like, all right, we're going to drop three grand on this this vacation. Yeah. Now it's like, do I really want to spend that three grand or am I going to miss that money when it's gone because now I got, I got money saved up? I mean, it's, it's, it's about the driving factors of getting to that point where it's like, I don't care who. The only thing that matters is what your, your situation is. Let, you me, know, let, me, be devil's at, about, let me be devil's advocate about that, right? So, yes, living within your means is important for anybody in, in, in life. Now, there's also a point of what did you get from that? experience if it's going to hong kong or vietnam what did you learn or what did you like get from a jacket or a bourbon or whatever that x is what if the reward was something that you never knew about yourself that you can actually drive on no i mean there's something that is. so if i was going to go out and see ray it that's 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 my reality check right there so if i went out to vietnam right and i, I planned this trip I'm sure he would show me the sites, and I would have great photos for my memories, not to show off necessarily, but I would absolutely be posting those things because I think that people will enjoy that. What if you learn something for your me. podcast that would literally give you a different way of doing your content? No, I think that'd be great. My point is my primary goal to go out to Vietnam would, would to be to see Ray. And, and I see him every, like, four years now at this point. You know what I mean? Or I, but the, the nice thing is, is I can also – it's not the same – but with technology, we can have a 45-minute video chat and we catch up just like we would if we were drinking together in Vietnam. Now, I would love to be there. I'd love to see it all. But, I mean, yeah. I, I can also have a, a video chat where, um, you know, we, we catch up and have that experience. And, and I think that that is okay to do. What were you going to say a little bit ago with, with, with Which Bobby? Part? I don't know. You were going to say something and then Bobby wanted to talk about something else i'm well, not sure while, while steve thinks about it one of the things that one of the things that makes uh my wife and i a little bit different than other people uh you know in our age bracket is like if if we see something that we want or we have goals that we want you know we're not trying to achieve those goals or, or get those things now we're gonna you know like what you said with saving up for the trip we we're gonna do what we can to save up to be able to afford those things yeah. uh, the way the way that we live if if we can't write a check for it or pay cash for it like we don't get it that's okay. just that's just the, the way, movie up that's just, that's just the way that the we movie are up. let's play let's play with a disney movie or whatever the up. movie up the movie up so they save to go on this huge vacation is that that old man that yes. ends up the in, the in the house in the house yeah. okay I've yeah, but, I, but it's funny with certain it's a it, it just Roll with me. Still I am, I'm here. Still a better love story than Twilight. I'm with you. I'm with you. Go but on. Twilight's a love they, triangle. They, I'm just they saying. always save up to go on this vacation, and something breaks in the house, or something. A car yeah. breaks down, right? And then she passes away. Hope that never happens to any, you know, anybody's loved ones. But let's let's be real. Life does happen, right? Did he still go on the trip? <laughs> see the movie. See Don't the no movie. spoilers out there. All right. Uh, at, Did he? At the end, of you got to watch it. Damn at, it. At the end of the day, right? There has to be – you don't want to always be saving and then regret something either. Yep. There's a fine line to that. Yes. And but that's not what Nate was saying. He says he I, has I, to have I, the money, so I, yes, there's but a so, goal there. But here's the thing. 
like my wife and I almost didn't go to Japan. We almost said fuck it. And the reason why was because Hendrick had to get surgery. Hendrix wasn't doing too well. That's your dog. That's my dog. All right. Just... Um, and you know, being in Dallas and not having the support that we had here in Ohio, where we can just easily, you know, hey, Danielle or Evan or Brian, any of our friends, like Josh, my brother, like, can you please watch Hendrix so we can do do this? It was a last minute decision that we're gonna go, and I literally told my wife like, work's always gonna be in the way. My work's always going to be in the way. There has to be a breaking point where you have to make that time for whatever X is to make sure that you're not hurting a relationship or something too where you're not taking care of yourselves also. So a vacation to me, even if it's a stay vacation or whatever, if it's in a budget thing, you don't want to let always a money situation, not saying that you be, be responsible enough, but you can't not – take care of yourself too absolutely jake i want to i want to ask you since we we are fortunate enough to have you on here so ah stop it <laughs> all right well next <laughs> nate um no jake <laughs> the fact that we're fortunate to have you on um you you went through this and now i'm, I'm gonna plug it a little bit everyone kind of knows if you if this is not your first time listening um that you made a a major life move to indianapolis and yeah. uh for those of you that have been a part of the podcast for a long time i think uh, we've all seen every everyone grow we've, we've seen the, the 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 changes with jake over the the last uh almost 100 episodes you move out there you and Alicia move out there uh strange town um you you've got uh i would say very minimal friends and family base out there it's only three hours away so i mean you've got that and social media helps and, and, right. and everything else and but you go into this this new place and i think that the comparison culture is 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 very very relevant here because when i came out there and and visited you it's a good fit for you but i would i would say this also is that if i was to 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 relate to it it's not only the the job i have now but then when i was in the moving and storage business we were high-end moving and storage business so it's like you're going into houses you're dealing with clients and customers that are more let's call it experienced and they they have a a higher level of income they have you know um just a a a broader scope as far as what the the abilities are on a day-to-day basis not not just financially but just just everything finances help obviously you're walking into a luxury cigar lounge and that's burned by rocky retail in indianapolis which you guys need you need to you need to check it out but you're going in there and you're making you're making good money and I'm not going to like get into that but you're making good money and you've got a great job and you've got but when when you're dealing with the people that come in there on a daily basis the locker members as yeah. you, as you get those how how do you how do you handle interactions because I think that's the big thing that Bobby's really getting to without knowing it is that it's the interactions with people that are are and not personally but sometimes like you said jake you know people have things figured out personality wise and everything else right you're constantly interacting with people that are more advanced or or less advanced than where you're at right so so i mean like what is the day-to-day interactions like how do you how do you handle that because comparison culture is not only like things to shoot for goals or like big trips or anything like that it's just literally like day-to-day thing where you're like i got right now it's like i got i got rent i have car payments i have this and i have that and it's I want to do this stuff and I want to be able to hang with these people. Yeah. I mean, well, and I, you know, you discussed that with me and my parents discussed that with me. Like it's a different, I don't know. I don't want to say it's like a different caliber than what the tender box was because like we do have some pretty it's a different sub- vibe. S- s- substantial people in the tender box, That's right. but it kind of is like a different caliber it's a different culture. when you right yeah you're exactly right bobby said there's a different culture um and and i think that's i i look at it um as a work in progress because and i think i said it the last time i was on for thanksgiving was is you know we have a very strong cigar culture here in columbus um that's right and i think indianapolis is completely untapped um, when you like talk to some, there's not a lot of people that know very much about cigars. Um, and I think, you know, you have these business guys that are coming from like Rolls Royce and Simon and these big marketing firms and stuff like that. And they come in and they're asking about a locker, but they're also, you know, they're kind of like Nate and Bobby here where they're also looking for the, that's the first words out of their mouth is like, well, what can you do for me? 
and and you know you're looking at someone that has a lot more experience than you that's that knows a lot more than you but like at the end of the day i have to take pride in what i'm doing and understand that like this is this is my humidor like that i'm the one that has the reins and what i mean by that is is that i don't just bend like right. my way of you know what the rules are just for someone that you know maybe pulls up in a rolls royce out front so when you say what can you do for me what are they what are you what are so you implying? like or what are they so implying? like what i mean is like so we have like we have corporate lockers and we have individual lockers and they range like our individual lockers are like two thousand dollars a year and our corporate lockers are four thousand dollars a year but you can have four people tied to the locker itself are they bigger no okay but it's just it allows you to have more people within that one more locker keys. yeah um and so, like, one big thing now is, is, like, companies come in and they'll say, well, how about we do, like, the individual locker? Like, I'm a very influential person in Indianapolis, and I'm, like, I'm pretty new to Indianapolis, and I don't really care. <laughs> like, it's, you Probably know. church it up a bit more than that. Well, I do church it up a little bit more, but at the end. <laughs> Pleasure like, to meet you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, like, wh- I mean, basically what I say, I mean, the finest way that I say it is, like, I can't do anything. I said two thousand is for the individual, four thousand is for the com- for the company, if you will, and that is up to four people. Don't do five, don't do right. six. Like these are the rules of this establishment. I like so, that. you know, and I think, I think, being self aware of myself, um, I think with this new position, I've gained a bigger sense of pride of the establishment of myself. There's there's a higher standard to be kept, and I know that people will take advantage of you know a new establishment. They'll come in, they'll try to work the system because they think that they're somebody. And you're you're describing confidence. Yeah, and yeah, and I think I think I I, I mean I'm sure you can see it on me as I'm sitting here. Is I have a little I have a lot more confidence in myself, and especially when I'm talking to people because yeah when. I mean, what it really comes down to is when you're, for me, you know, you still have the idiots that come in and they'll feel every cigar. We just had an incident and I about blew my top. I love and, that you're, excuse me, I love that you're experiencing a, a walk-in <laughs> humidor. Yeah. and it, I love it. Yeah, but it's just I like, don't want to be you. I love it though. But remember, did, did they, you. Did but they, we, it's good on you. But did, they still, <laughs> did they squeeze a cigar and break it? No, but it was it, so. Yeah, or, or did they, or did they break the cellophane and, I'll, and break I'll explain, the barcode? I'll, so this system. So we had this company party with Simon, and the guy, the 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 board member, however, is a very awesome guy, loaded but very down to earth, and he's awesome. He has a locker, and it, all of his friends come in and say they have a locker, and I say, well, so what's your name? And I'm looking at the locker list. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> Do they have a key or who has the key to this? No, it's not a company locker. It's an individual locker, so it wouldn't even matter. So you hand out one key? Or yeah. No? Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm, you know, anyways, so when this guy comes in, he says, I have a locker. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, sir, you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, they're like, well, you know, so-and-so told us that we did. And I'm like, I know so-and-so, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't say that. So, nice. you know, whatever you're trying to pull, it's fine. But so then he, go- he proceeds to go around in the walk-in humidor and starts feeling every cigar. It doesn't matter if it's twenty dollars, if it's fifteen dollars, or if it's eight dollars. He's feeling it and you know squeezing it. And he comes up to the counter. We're loaded with people stacked up. Yeah, with people stacked up. Yeah, getting rang out. And he comes up to me personally and says, "Are you the manager?" And I said, "Yes, I'm. You know, I'm the humidor manager. You know, what can I help you with?" Um, and so he's like, "Well, this cigar feels, you know, kind of hard." And I said, "Well, if you don't like it, you can pick out another." <laughs> <laughs> it's not the only and one we have left. Pick uh, another and, cigar. And it was so funny to see the reaction on his face. And he was like, well, okay. What did he want from that, do you think? Or did he say, like, I mean, what, what do you I think? really don't care. <laughs> well, I, I was so. Because I've had times where, you know, Jake, you know, at the tinderbox, all the cigars are in bins. Right. And, you know, so those bins are typically two, three cigars wide. Right. And someone's like, oh, yeah, can I get this cigar right here? Right. Yeah, let me go around. I'll go grab it. You go to grab a cigar out of that bin They're like no 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 i want that one i wanted the one next to it <laughs> yeah it's it's the same freaking cigar so it's like no no this one looks better yeah 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 i just <laughs> say okay and grab another cigar it's about position <laughs> i would too um but so what this guy does is he pers- he doesn't go grab another cigar he brings it up to me again this time it's out of the cellophane took it out took it out 
Um, and then he puts it in his mouth. Perfect. And then he looks at me and he's like, well, this cigar still feels, you know, hard to me. And I'm like, in your I, teeth. well, and I look, I'm <laughs> livid at this point. And I'm like, well, with all due respect, sir, it really doesn't matter at this point. Cause you're buying yeah, it. Yeah, It's yours now. Yeah. yeah. So, and he, you know, he kind of got up in arms and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, I'm with Simon, blah, blah, blah. We're here on a company. You know, I'm here on business. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've actually done one at one of the one of the old shops I used to work at. Yeah. You know, where we had uh community cutters that were on the counter. Yeah. Not not like a tinderbox where we kind of have them behind the counter and we cut the cigar for you. Yeah. Like these were these were cutters that people could actually grab themselves and cut their cigar. Right. And you know, they would sit there, put the cigar in their mouth and, and then, then cut it. And then grab one of the community cutters. Yeah. And so I would actually add the cost of that cutter. And this is, you know, you're talking like the $5 plastic cutter. That's smart, cutters. though. That's I would, smart. I, I like would that. add the cost of the cutter. I like that. To, to, their, to their bill. I'm going to use that. And they're like, that. wait a minute. I, I thought this cigar was, you know, $8.99. That's smart. Like, yeah, but you just, you, you know, put it in your mouth, put your spit all over it, and then use that shop cutter. I, I can't have another person using that because now they're going to cut their cigar with your spit on it. Yeah. Now like, you at, just bought that cigar. Go ahead, Bobby. I mean, at the end of the day, right, because you got to remember, you work this industry, right? Right. There are a lot of naive people out there. Yeah. Right? So just because maybe the guy had, was a little tipsy, right, or maybe the guy wasn't in the right mind, or maybe he has no background of cigars at all. So you got to make sure if that's the case, right? Yeah, is that an idiotic move? Absolutely. But you got to still be empathetic in the sense of, did you put that out there for somebody? You know, make sure they know that they're going to get charged for that. You just can't just start, do, you can't go wild, wild west. and that re- Oh, I like that way much better. No, but that, then how is that reflected on your business? It's not reflecting. It's, it does. It's common courtesy. No, it's not because. It's common courtesy. It's an educating moment. There's a learning moment it's there. There's a learning moment There's, there. No, for I'll, both sides, right? I'll, so. I'll say this. So the end of the conversation started or ended with the, the whole discussion about this cigar, right? So, so I asked the gentleman, I said, well, do you know, I said, what do you think is the optimum humidity for a humidor? You're just, you're, now you're just pushing, like, you're, you're showing how big your balls are because you know no. more than him. I no, that. that's a that's an honest question. If you think we'll, we'll if he thinks if he because he thought the cigar was hard. So let's let's start. Let's let's play the. So you're dialing down. You're trying to have a good discussion. I guess yeah. I'm not sure what your tone was at that time. Right. I'm assuming. Oh, I'm I was using the same tone because okay. I was hot. But <laughs> so, so if you're I hot, actually like that you're doing that out there. I, I well, well, you. as you said, Steve, welcome to having a walk in humidor. But what so I understand. I understand the understanding of the customer, the, the empathy of the situation, but I don't walk into, I look at it as I would do something. So I wouldn't walk into an establishment of something. I know nothing. That's not assuming. That's common courtesy. No, that's an assumption. Common courtesy is an they're, assumption. They're, let me, let me, let me move beyond that. So it's like, what's the end game, right? So, so let's, let's, Let's dial down on that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, we're kind of off topic a little bit, but, but I, I will say. I think it's comparing. Well, <laughs> if, if someone comes up to you, right? Yeah. And they, with one cigar, right? So they come up with one cigar, like a little, little hard. And you're like, okay, let's pick out another one. Let's, let's, yeah. And, and there's a way to, to, to get into that a little bit. Like if, if you weren't stacked up with customers, right? But it's like, you, you know, it, depending on. This situation, be I've like, seen hey, the Turner box. You guys no, literally no, 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 help no, no, each I'm other. I'm saying, out. like, he, he could be like, let, I was let's fine go look at some until the second time he came. That's up. my point. Is that now you have someone in there, right? So you have someone in this situation. It doesn't matter if it's cigars or anything else. That they're just this one's hard too. And you're just like, I get where you're coming from, Jake. Is that you know, it's like what let, let's you're trying to you're you're heated. So now you're, it's not really con- confronting that person, but it's like you're you're like, well, what what are you looking for? Is is more or less from the treetop level, like. What are you looking for? How soft do you need a cigar? Yeah, that would have been better. Because if if, if I'm gonna be looking at this, it's like <laughs> you're with Simon. Cool. Like I don't I don't really care. But at the same time, it's like I I don't care if you're with Simon. If you're with uh, it doesn't matter. You know, what if, company if you, you work, with. you know, if you work for for nine dollars an hour at Goodwill, I don't I don't care. My point is is like you're here for a cigar. So so let's figure it out. Stop putting shit in your mouth and stop saying this is hard. It's like cool. That's not the one for you. And, and worst case scenario is that I don't have a cigar for you. So so now it's like you don't like our humidification. 
we're at an impasse. No, now, no. Now I, we figured it out that you have to shop elsewhere because. But that's what I was trying to get to. Was, I realize. I know. That. I know you're trying. That. That's I know, what I'm saying. I know that this is what you're trying to get to. I'm just saying at the end of the day, right? Just sometime like I had. Okay, I'm a. I was in Verizon customer service before I became a senior data analyst, right? Right. So I was on the phones. Yeah. Everybody's going to have a sense of entitlement. I am a doctor. I am the CEO of this company. I am this. I am yeah. that. Okay, great. Awesome. Good for you. What's your name? I don't care if it's doctor this. Your name is Steve. Hey, Steve. What's the main cause? I get down to where well, at that's the what same he's level. trying to do. I know, but I'm just saying you just got to make you, sure you don't forget about that because just because that one customer was this, they could still talk sh- crap and they're probably still going to talk crap, but there's always a way to dial down a situation. What he did was... I agree with any workers that literally have to deal with customer service because people are not, they just assume that you're supposed to bend but down back. For me, for the service level, the surface level was dialing it down, was asking him about what does he think the proper humidification would be in the humidor. You took it as a constructive conversation with a point. Yeah, because so he, he's like, well, I don't really know. And I, I said, so then how do you, how would you expect that cigar to be right or wrong? I, I've actually. Um, one of the shops that I worked at, I had I had, so, I I had someone yeah. who I've been there. I had someone who who <laughs> made yeah, a I negative. I, I had someone who made a negative comment about a cigar, and they're like, "Man, this this cigar, you know, it, I think this cigar is dry." And I literally went and grabbed the digital hygrometer and brought Doesn't it out. And I'm like, "No, it it's 69 percent humidity in there." So yeah, your hygrometer is wrong. I, I I mean, I can play yeah. both sides of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not at the end of the day. I know it's off topic, but I'm just saying, especially if it's a new business and you're building up the clientele and it's an untapped area. I'm just saying, even if he's in there for business, I re, if before I was friends with any of y'all and the tender box. If I had that experience and I was being naive or say I was having a bad day, you know that. It's always you don't realize what you could. But he wasn't being naive; he was being arrogant. There's, I mean, but I've I've been an arrogant person too. You got that other whiskey. I don't want to kill this bottle. No, you, you go right ahead. All right, so and let me let me let me address this real quick. Here. I like this though because it's comparing viewpoints, right? Yeah, it is. I, what I, I got to say about business with <laughs> with all this stuff is that I tell you what that person and, and Jake, you brought up my my tweet, which I'm starting to do a little bit more, but I'm still not big on Twitter, but. <laughs> Some people are fucking miserable, and, and I got to be honest <laughs> with that. That guy's going to pay for a, uh, a cigar, but it doesn't matter you know, if you have that conversation with him. It doesn't matter if you try to educate that person. It, sometimes it doesn't matter if you, you walk around that humidor and literally feel how many um, – you have, what, thousands of cigars in there. Yeah. You could feel all thousands of those cigars, and, and you guys keep using this, this phrase, and I, I appreciate this, but it's like – to, to your guys' words, is at the end of the day, that person's still going to get on Yelp and be like, yeah, I had to feel 999 cigars, and then they finally had one that was good. It, you want all the bit like starting a business, you want you you don't want all the business. You want the business that you can make money off of, right? That's why you're in business. So that person is going to talk poorly about you the Regardless. majority of the time. <laughs> well, no, no, you can, you can do the extra mile, but there's still... That's the thing is that any business and and, and it's that's and just, I, I, I don't like the fact that we're that far off topic, but I will say that we have those customers now that they are unhappy when they come in, they're unhappy when they leave, and then I see them the next time and they're still unhappy. The point is they still come back in. <laughs> you have to understand that yep. they're going to complain about anything. People will complain. We're talking about comparison culture. Some people, whether they're at the top of their game and, and, you know, what we're talking about, you know, like financially, success, whatever, they have wife and kids and they're happy. The problem is, is that their demeanor is, is miserable. And that, that yeah. happens. And then hopefully they, they realize that at some point. But you and your position, Jake, or anyone like when you were in, in, in the call center, Nate, you're dealing with clients all the time. Now, I'm not even talking about Tinderbox, but you're dealing with like internal customers too. There are people that are just upset. So we talk about this whole comparison culture thing, and we talk about the fact that there's always going to be people out there that are more successful than you financially, emotionally, uh, um, whatever it might be, you know, personality-wise. Like, but when they come into certain interactions, they're still assholes because they just don't get it. They're just 
that's how they are. And we don't know why they are that way. We don't know why anyone's any way they are because you don't know their whole life story. There's so much that goes into someone. Before that person walked into your store, Jake, it, it's one of those things that this guy, you could talk to the other five coworkers that were with him. Right. And literally be like, I'm trying to make him happy. And I bet you four out of five, if not all five, are going to be like, yeah, no, he's never happy. This is how he is everywhere. We go to fucking Chili's and he's going to complain about the, <laughs> the temperature yeah. of the wings that are yeah. literally $5, all you can eat fucking appetizers. <laughs> and he's still going to be upset because he didn't have enough wings because he, it took too long. He's just, that's how he is. Bitter. But he's such a nice guy. He's like, is he? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm saying, you, you, you can guess, only do so much. You can always, I guess for me, Personally, I always think that I try to look at as much good as I can in all people, regardless of what negative comments they're going to say or judgments they're going to have, because I lived all those negative comments. Absolutely. Right. So for me, at the end of the day, like, and it, we're talking about something I wasn't even there, right? I'm not saying Jake did not handle the situation good or bad. I just wanted to see, is there a different viewpoint from it, right? I don't... Oh, there's it, always... It, Multiple and, viewpoints. And, and so it's just putting yourself in those person's shoes yeah. and understanding it. And you can do that with this type of comparison cultures. Because just because they are flossing or they have all these nice things or X, Y, and Z doesn't mean they're happy, right? If I have money, it doesn't mean I'm happy. Because well, I, I looked at it as like a learning situation. Like I how told, so? How so? Because I said, like, so you don't know what the optimal humidity is i said well just for your information we keep ours at you know 69 70 percent humidity which is i mean would you say steve pretty optimal again but i'll say back to the point that i said to, to nate when you bring out that or you show them that you're like oh that's off it doesn't matter like they, in their minds like the, the cigars I get it, hard but, but it's like i was being th- I, th- th- there, me, are, there are you, some you, people you're doing what you're you're supposed to, to be me doing, i thought i, I was being empathetic and i was actually teaching the man something yeah, absolutely. but but there are some people that you can never please when you're in a customer service oh i didn't retail. give a shit about pleasing them i just wanted them to learn something i like that well so so there's a difference between i wasn't swinging my dick or anything it was just <laughs> no, I, think, I want you to learn something well, you keep your pants on yeah, I, <laughs> I think, well, I think there's... <laughs> that would have been a bad move if you started swinging your dick around. I mean, that, that's Do you think that'd go... be an HR problem? It's going to at least be on Yelp. <laughs> yeah. No. Or a Google review. All publicity is good publicity. That's yeah. not if there's a dick involved swinging around. I'm going to no. tell you that right now. There, there's a difference between taking an opportunity as a teaching moment, you know, where you're trying to educate the right. person in a nice way and taking that same moment to swing your dick around. Right. Like there there is a difference between those two. Like how you handle it, your attitude coming across. Yeah. You know, well, that's my biggest problem. You what? Know, <laughs> I yeah. can't change well, my attitude at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You yeah, you're full go all the time. Yeah. Um which comes off bad. So but. Bobby, on the uh, I know he's saying it's hard to watch. What's so hard to watch about the show tonight? <laughs> No, don't don't engage, Bobby. <laughs> I oh, like Bobby Hirschman. I love him. <laughs> he's a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's been vocal tonight. He no, he's been. been. He's been. He's playing. He says he's still listening. He he's he's, he's playing uh, my game today. No, so let's see he, what he says. Yeah. No. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bob, yeah. Bob, yeah exactly. Oh, I will. Cry, no, Bobby. I appreciate but, it. You know, it's one of those things. This is this is one of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now he's getting into it. We're not gonna. Oh, you don't like Bobby's. You don't like yourself. That's understandable. All right. All right. All right. We're still we're still dealing with this. So. Um, I, I, I want to do this, and it's not because of what that, but we're getting to that time point, that time frame where I, I want to hear. Let's get back on topic for part two: the comparison culture. What are your biggest takeaways for all of this? I mean, I, I love having Jake on, and I, I think that we we went on to a, a little bit of a tangent that I think is is relative. I mean, you talk about different different mindsets. I mean, I was in the moving and storage industry, like I've mentioned. Um, and, and I will say this is that when you're, you're moving furniture for people, right. And we, we move people that were in four or five bedroom houses in an area in Columbus, that's new Albany, six bedroom houses. You're, you're talking half a million, full million plus houses. And you, you also are moving people that probably shouldn't be paying a, a moving company for a hundred plus dollars an hour to, to move them out of a one bedroom apartment that we find out is the reason we reject them after we're starting to load is because there's roaches there. So you have a, you have a gambit there, right? But when it comes down to it is that 
there are people that are at the, the high end, if you will, in the, the, the life situation. You have people that, and they could be up to their eyeballs in debt, you know what I mean? You know, whatever it is. But then you also have people that are in the, the mode of, you know, they don't have much. But when it comes to the end of the move, there are stories that, you know, you get a $20 tip from someone that their bill was $300 and you literally are watching them get a ride over to their new place because they don't own a car. And you also have people that, and these are true stories, is that you have, you have people that, that when you ask for a little bit, like, hey, I'm out of water, like, do you mind if I fill it up in your fridge or in the, the faucet? And they say, there's a hose on the side of the house. You can't buy class. So the, the comparison culture is, and I'll say this, and it's not what this podcast is about, but an asshole is an asshole, and it doesn't matter where you're at. I love at. that. It's, it's, it's the point that, from, from my viewpoint, is that the comparison culture, if you're always striving to be someone that you're not, that's the problem. So for me, it's with the comparison culture, it's you, you need to, when you see something that you, you covet, and you see someone that you look up to, whether it be personality, Gary Vee, you mentioned Bobby, you see these people that are successful financially, emotionally, it doesn't matter. You see the, the guy that's you know working on trucks every day, you know what I mean? But he goes home and, and he grabs a six pack and, and goes home to his wife and he's happy. But at the same time, he's driving a, you know, 92 Ranger, Ford Ranger, you know what I mean? But it's, it, it's a good enough truck. But they're happy. These are the things you have to strive for, but you have to figure out how you get there. So if you, you want that big house, you want that nice car, you want the material possessions, you know, the people you're dealing with, Jake, over right. at Burn, not all of them, but, you know, same thing at Tinderbox. Any, anywhere you deal with it, but when you get to those... You, you see those people that you want what they have, you covet that, you envy that, figure the fuck out if you can get there or not, and if you can, how? That, that's the motivation there. It's not the motivation. Uh, we, we've talked about the, the podcast, uh, with, with, uh, and it's no longer happening, I guess, and kind of, I get it, but the uh, MF CEO is, is no longer. They did their last episode with Andy Frisella, but Really? Yeah, there was one that I really, really interesting. W- was interested in is that he was talking about material possessions, and he was talking about, you know, he had a poster of the Lamborghini in his, in his, in his, his bedroom growing up, and it was one of those things that it was like he, he, he really, that was a goal. But he had the mindset where it's like, what do I need to do to be able to afford that? Right, so that's that whole thing. That's the Kardashian thing. That's the the cribs thing. It's like the reason that person's on there is because they're very good at basketball, or they're a movie star, or they've done this and they're financially successful. That's that's how they got this house. That's how they got those cars. I was I was one. I mean, I, I've always been that, and I think it's old school. You know, going back to it, where um, I, you know, I went to you know through it all, where you know, my dad had that seventy nine Lincoln. He bought it new, but then also I saw the fact that. That seven nine Lincoln wasn't new in 1995. <laughs> we still had that car, <laughs> but but I heard stories, you know, like this is, you know, that that's what it was. So for me, it was one of those things that like a car is always something that you you want to you want to have a nice car. And this is 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 with me today, right? I'm not gonna overextend myself, but I, I want to have a nice car because one, I I really enjoy it. I, I like the creature comforts, and this is something that I I really 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 like, and and it brings me happiness. Go to material possessions. That's it. I want a nice car, because I know it's expensive to repair, but at the same time, it's like that's something that back in the day it used to be like that's what people saw you arrive in, so it it, it, it exuded success or at least a, a um, it was before. Yeah, perception. It was before social media. You know what I mean? This is something. You show up in a, in a car that's respectable. It's, it's something. The movie Swingers, right? I don't know if you guys have seen Swingers. Mm-hmm. You seen Swingers? Yeah, so it's like, remember that when uh, uh, John Favreau is, is talking to that girl in the bar, and it was like, what'd you, and he's like trying to hit on her. And he's like, what would what, you come here tonight? And he's like, uh, I think it was like a Chevy Cavalier. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she's like, she's like, she's disinterested. And he, he's just like, it's red. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, it's like you, you know, you showed up in it. And it's like it doesn't matter who you know who you are at that point. But it's like there's a little bit of that, and I, I'm guilty of the fact that I, I that was part of it. But I've learned now is that I got I got to do things because I enjoy them and I can I can afford them. I know my neighbor in this neighborhood 
may have a nicer house or more updated house or make more money than me. But they might look at me because I pull in, in, in a Cadillac that it's like, oh, these guys are doing really well. It's like, no, no, that's not what it's about. You know what I mean? If you want a Cadillac, or you want a Mercedes, you want this, figure out how to get there. You know, figure out what you have to do to actually afford it. It's not just go to the car lot and keep up with the Joneses because that will, to your point, Nate, you will go broke if you live beyond your means. Nate, what are your closing remarks? So part of my closing remarks, you know, we're talking about comparison. One of the other aspects I had thought about uh, on the way over here <clears throat> that we didn't touch on was uh, relationships. Because relationship, right. relationships is another thing that people will compare themselves to other people about. And not just how good their relationship is, but who they're in a relationship with, especially with social media. You see pictures on social media, you know, the cute couple, you know, some hot model on Instagram. You're like, oh my gosh, I, gosh, I wish I was dating someone like that. It's like, really? Because you don't know what their personality is. You don't know what other baggage comes with that person be content with what you have because chances are what you have is not bad and it, even more it, so not be content but enjoy yes <laughs> right. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when we're i not talking about settling here exactly because <laughs> because i wouldn't trade my wife for anyone um because of every I <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm trying to get points here. Shut up. Um, but no, because because of everything else that my wife provides, like I I can't do better. Like if you had all the different categories and you were doing a scoring system, don't, like you're going down a slippery slope. No, I don't want. I want. I don't want to be a part of this <laughs> scoring system. Yes, no. you're amazing. Yeah, she is. You're I, gorgeous, and you're 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 a rock for Nate. I wouldn't trade her for the I'll world. Let me finish this. I got this. <laughs> Jeez. Before, before oh. you, you trip over yourself, go on. <laughs> no. no well, we, we had this conversation on the way over here. Perfect. So, you know, like, no, I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade what I have because I'm, you know, with what you said about the car, Steve, I'm happy with what I have. Yeah. I'm happy with it's it's not just I'm content with who I'm married right. to. I'm happy with who I'm married to. I'm not just content with where I live. I'm happy where I live. Right. Um you know, do I do I wish I had nicer cars? Yeah, I do, but I'm also glad I don't have a car payment. You know, I I I don't compare myself to many people because I'm going to do things the way that I want to do. And, you know, like when it, when it came to, to Christmas, you know, one of the Christmas presents I got, it was a box that had two pairs of jeans. Cool. That's what I wanted. I wanted more jeans for Christmas. Dude, I'm you telling know, you. Or you, you think about it, like how many times as, as adults do we sit there and be like, you know what? When I was a kid, I fucking hated getting socks for Christmas. Now that I'm an adult, I, really I need love socks. getting socks I need for Christmas. Socks. I really need I got, socks. I got four belts. From Liz, and they're amazing. Yeah, like Avi says. By the way, just you know, Nate, the the she shed is available. <laughs> it's available the tonight if needed. Oh my god! We'll get him an Uber over, I, Jess. I'm sorry. Don't leave, Jess. It's fine. It, Good I, lord. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't need an Uber. I got my wife. You know, and I don't need a she shed because I'm going to be sleeping in the same bed tonight. So I'm good, <laughs> Avi. Thank you. Amen. Um, but no, I mean, it's a nice offer. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was a nice offer. No, um, no, I, I don't. You know, when we're talking about comparison culture, there's not a lot that I compare myself to, because I'm happy with the things that I have. Do I want to have better things? Yes, but I'm not going to be necessarily upset or disappointed if I can't have those super nice things. Like, you know, growing up. You know, I always had a, I always had like my dream car to own, and then oh my gosh, if I could ever have this car, like yeah. so, so like my dream car that could be reasonable. What was it? Would be a Corvette. Like I would, I would love to be able to have a Corvette. Like that's that's just a car that I've always loved. My my absolute my absolute <laughs> dream car that I would have to you know be a multimillionaire to own is you know a '67 Shelby 427 Cobra. That'd be cool. Yeah, am I ever 
in, unless something you can. That's that's my point. Is yeah. that you figure out how you get there, right? So you don't just. But you know what? If sell I, the house. If I don't ever own a Shelby Cobra, or if I don't ever own a Corvette, I'm not going to look at my life as a failure. You know, if if I don't have this giant, you know, four bedroom house on ten acres, so. If if I have a house and I have drive you though, I mean, like you 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 have to take other steps. There are like you can look at certain things to drive you to want to succeed, but don't sit there and think that you're a failure if you don't have those things. I have a roof over my head. I have a loving spouse. I have a car that gets me point A to point B. I have food on the table. I have heat. I have water. I have air conditioning. I have a lot of things that a lot of people don't have. And so there's a lot of times where we sit there and we want to compare ourselves to people that have more than us or what we perceive to be better than us. Look at the other way. Like compare yourself to people that don't have what you have. Right. And it's going to make you appreciate what you have a lot more. Right. Bobby, what do you got, man? Close your remarks. Uh, Comparison culture. And I appreciate you being here. I mean, like I know you, you, you have family that you are visiting, and, and, and I, I feel like, no, knowing our relationship, I, I feel like this extended family. You know what I mean? It's, it's friends, but we, we've had a lot of good uh, heart-to-hearts over the years, and, and I appreciate you being here. No, I, and I mean... And being yourself. I mean, that's the, the biggest part of it. Yeah. For me, I... Comparison culture, the Joneses, the whole nine yards, like... Yeah. It, I am. I'm just. I'm very shocked and blessed every day, and um, nice. It it just turns into appreciation, right? Am I hot headed? Absolutely. frequently. Am, am I going to change that? No. Am I going to do my best to make sure if I did something wrong, I'm always going to admit to it? Absolutely. Right. Um. At the end of the day, as long as I don't lose who I am and learn, like lose who, like who brought me up, like my mom and my friends are literally who I look up to, and make sure I surround myself with the people that are only gonna bring me up, and it's not a comparison, and just being that self-aware and just enjoying the moment. I mean, that's that's literally the only thing I ever want to keep up with the Joneses. Is if they have that, then I want that. Right. Uh, I I don't. I don't care about the material things because every single day I didn't think I was going to be where I was and tomorrow it could just be taken away from me. And so appreciating the moment, even if it's a 19 hour drive or a two hour drive back down here or just being on the podcast. I mean, it's, I'm just happy that Jake actually is here too. Cause I, I mean, this is, it's, it's kind of nice to see how this family has grown. Yeah. And even though people move away from it, like I understand what Jake's going through. I did it. You did. Yeah. And I know a lot it, farther. <laughs> it doesn't, but it's still it's you're not as close as what you were, but you still have that relationship and you're blessed to have that relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's only going to make you stronger. And you're going to learn so much about yourself when you move and when you go away from certain things, because it's something you don't want to take from granted, but you don't want to make sure you lose it. So any opportunity that I'm here in Ohio and there's a podcast, I'm going to be here. I know right. Jake's going to do the same thing. I know all your fans, all the community is always going to be there. They're going to meet up. This show literally is going to grow because of just the passion that everybody contributes to it. Yeah. Regardless of whatever comments or regardless of anything that goes through anybody's head. <laughs> Sorry, you know, so Bobby Hirschman says, now I'm loving this other Bobby guy. <laughs> it's funny how it goes full circle. You know what it, I mean? Like that. <laughs> It's like, it's, like a, it's like a long night, you know, in the garage, you know, with Mike's not on, and, you know, you have this this conversation, and it's like the beyond you, the BS. Yeah, you meet of. you meet someone for the first time, and you're like, I don't know about this. Isn't guy. that you know exactly know? what I said earlier? You it's didn't like, like you didn't like Bobby. No, no. When, <laughs> I, no, I when, asked. No, when when Bobby asked <laughs> me, Bobby. like when Bob, no, no when Bobby Crow way. asked me, like what I first thought about him, I was like, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're kind of a dick. But then I actually got to know you. Same thing with what we've seen going on. I mean, uh, so, get to know I normally hate all my people that I become friends with. I mean, I think the <laughs> best. Right, I mean, at, at like, the end, we're like, like, uh, my first, let's talk my about first when we first like, met Jake. I don't like you, but <laughs> we end up becoming friends. I, I think when you are challenged <laughs> with people, 
you the reason why you feel challenged is because they might have something you think that you don't have. Or to your point, you know, Bobby, and let's get to Jake here real quick. But you know, it's like when you were talking about like posting the the Japan picks. It, it's you you talked about it being being self aware. I, I think it's something that's again. I I'm not. It's not condescending or negative. It's like there's a self conscious thing. It's a it's a self doubt. Like I'm posting these things. You know what I mean? Like we meet someone, and and you're you're you want to be your best self, but sometimes it's you don't. You're you're now worried about. I'm being my best self. I'm being myself, but how are they taking it? There, there are a lot of those things. And on the flip side of that is like, and I'm not saying you and Jake the first time, but you know, like Nate brought it up. It's like you're being your authentic self, and then all of a sudden, it's like he takes it a certain way because, oh man, this. I had a college roommate, right? And the first time, Adam, right? Um, and and he listens to this every once in a while. It's funny. Freshman year, I was I was super self conscious, right? Freshman year, moving in, I had my one friend Craig, who were still friends, but it was like we we moved into the dorm, and uh, the neighbors moved in. It was it was Adam Demko and Jason Fackler, and they were friends from high school from Vermilion, Ohio. Me thinking like I need to not reinvent myself, but just like just do the the right thing. I walked into their room right next door to us, and I introduced myself. And and Adam, if he was on this podcast to this day, he tells a story. He's like, "Who the fuck is this guy being all confident and fucking walking in and walk like introducing himself?" He's like, "Oh, we're moving in next to this the fucking asshole that just he's cocky as shit." But to your point, Jake, as we got to know each other, like we're lifelong friends, right? Well, but his first impression is like. I'm nervous as shit moving into college. This guy's walking over introducing himself. What a, what a dick. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Like, well, I'm nervous right now. I don't know yeah, who you are. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm threatened. Yep. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a 10-second story. And we got to get to Jake. Yeah. Well, we'll so too. I'll give you a 10-second yeah, story. Yeah, let Bobby finish. A friend of mine in college, the first time I met him, the first year that I knew him, didn't think much about him, didn't really like him. And then fast forward four years after we graduated, he was a groomsman in my wedding. Like yeah. what? That's how it works. How I viewed him when I first met him was completely different a year or two later. Right, Bobby. And I think that's that. At the end of the day, don't let keeping up with the Joneses. I think that really touches home. Ever change or doubt who you? If you already know who you are, and you you are everybody's going to have self doubt, right? They do. Yeah, I don't care what, yeah, I don't care yeah, yeah, yeah. how successful or whatever you're going through. Just make it so you stay true and not forgetting what made you who you are and what made you successful. And then not always making your weak points stronger, but maybe just making your strong points even stronger. Yeah. And because you don't need to change your weak points. That's where your friends and your group and your team or whatever it is – you got to let that per- person do what they're good at to right. make sure that you're successful at that because you're only going to make the best Joneses of your friends and your family and the best Cranes, you know what I mean, or the best Sanders or the best Hales. I mean, it, it, it's about your inner circle and making sure that you just don't segregate it off and just keep growing. Right. And – that's the thing that I always am striving for and learning about myself because I wasn't always confident. I'm I'm still not confident in a lot of things. Even though I know my gut's right half the time, I still need to make sure that I continue driving myself to be the best Robert I can be or the best Bobby I can be because that's only going to make the people around me stronger. Right. And it's also going to make me know that I am supporting that person, like my wife, because – that's my family. Right. And making sure that we do what we can to make ourselves better because I don't give a crap about anybody else because they're not living my life. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. so I hope the best for yeah, everybody. You care about everyone. This, I, I, not, at the end of the day, I care yeah, about yeah, everyone. Don't, but Don't, don't breeze but over that. I, I do. I, I Maybe more than I, I feel should. feel like he's telling himself this. But at the same time, I, I just want to make sure that Everybody takes that sometimes that little advice because you don't realize what you're doing or what you're succeeding in until you tell yourself you're succeeding in it. Yeah, it's a good point. It's, it's powerful. I like that. So I have a few things there. No, I'm good. 
Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, your glass was empty. So I know. I know. I we got to drive to Bell Fountain after this. Um, Bell Fountain. So, so I got a few things, and Bobby and um, Nate both mentioned this, and this is just a l- please a little. Ah. Perfect. Um. <laughs> So Bobby and Nate both mentioned it, and it was trying. It was what I was trying to get to um, at the very beginning of this part two of episode ninety nine was the fact that you know for us, I think us four and people that have been listening and viewing this, they already know <laughs> is that you know us four are pretty comfortable in our own skin. So when it comes down to like my example earlier with being younger because it's my experience when I was younger, I was always trying to keep up with the kids that had Hollister or Abercrombie or Airpods or American Eagle. Like I, I wanted the, the bird or the moose on my shirt and blah, blah, blah. And, um, but then I figured out as I got older, like right now I, you know, I'm wearing a, a jacket that looks like it's all wool, but it was my grandfather's. Like I didn't go out and buy, buy this, you know what I mean? So it's like, I have, you know, I don't think most 20 year olds are going to be wearing their (laughs) grandfather's jacket just because it's not their style. And I think what I'm, what I'm really trying to get to is that we all have our own viewpoints of ourselves. Authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to describe. (laughs) Um, but then, so you before I was here, you discussed like Gary V, oh, right? Nice. So I saw an article today, and I think this is is relevant here. So I saw an article today about because um, I'm a Gary V fan, absolutely. Um, but I saw an article today that explained like what kind of um, they called it. Um, oh crap! It's evading me. Um, anyways. Basically, what the article was explaining is you have these influencers saying that you always need to be doing something, you know, to better yourself or you're always, you always need to be, str- oh, that's what it's called. It's called struggle porn. <laughs> okay. Struggle porn. That's what the, the article was. So it Wait, was. Attention grabber. game to introduce that. To yeah. That topic. But, Attention so, grabber. But what it, yeah. But it, what it was explaining was, is that these, you know, like Gary V or Corey Gregory or Andy Frisella or these, these main these big, big influencers over social media that have gone through everything and they're, you know, they've, they're self-made and they're, they've made their lives out of something from the bottom to the top and they're trying to help other people get there. I think after reading this article, I think it had a lot of great points and I'm of the opinion that sometimes if you look to, if you look at it too much, you get a, um, a psychological sense of always, you always have to be struggling and that's what this article was about. So it's like when I love things, that you're saying that right now. When things are always like, even if they're good, like with what Nate was saying, like he's happy with with Jess. He's happy with his life. He understands what he's grateful for. And yet, like someone on the other hand would be watch would be in the same boat, happy with what they have, but then watch something that Gary V puts out or Andy Frisella or Corey Gregory, and say, well but I'm not struggling with anything. So I'm, is there something wrong with me? Like it's, there's a, there's a spiraling thing. And I did, I didn't never thought about this until I saw that article, but I think understanding it's not being content, Nate, but understanding what you are grateful for and seeing what, where you have came from and knowing that when you have met your goal to sit back and, take it in for a little bit you don't always have to be struggling for you can strive for something more at a later date but enjoy it for a second you know what i mean and and i think i think when people compare and contrast each other um i think that article was pretty fitting to what we were kind of talking about no i think it is like I, i gotta say jake i mean that that you have actually like you 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 mentioned it earlier like i don't know if i don't know what you said what you said exactly but you you've come a long way but um yeah that's i feel good good 
That's amazing to hear from you, and I, I am so, so pleased to hear that from you. Yeah. If, if you guys have been following the podcast for, for a while, I think that I'm it only not took alone. 99 episodes. I'm, I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm not alone in saying this, and I think, Jake, you already know this, is that I, I'm not alone in saying that, that, that We're all it proud is of refreshing you. That's a proud. to hear you say that. Yeah. yeah. No, because I, that was not always the case. And, and you, you're, you're actually a, a testimonial for a lot of people that, that, that are in the boat you were earlier. That, that it wasn't that long to, ago. Yeah, it wasn't. Not at all. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you respect where you come from. You know where you want to go. You want the best for your family. You're living the dream. You're making your own dream from it. You're making yeah. those sacrifices. And you know what? Just because I don't get to make fun of you on the podcast as much as I <laughs> wish I could. Yeah. Yeah, you can make fun of other people now. Oh, I, I mean, Bobby will definitely have some fun times after this. <laughs> but no, at, at the end of the day, it's just... Uh, as long as you're pushing yourself to be better, and we can all see it, you're living what you've always been preaching on the podcast. And guess what? Without the podcast, I think, I think you almost have like that Gary Vee effect where you get to go back and watch yourself grow. Yeah. And, it's you, get to, and you get to enjoy and cherish those moments and mm -hmm. take those in there. And then when you're in Ohio or when you're in Indianapolis or Steve's there, I'm there. Because my parents live in Carmel. Right. There you go. And yeah. so at the end of the day, it's very just, close to us. It's you have that foundation. As long as you keep building that foundation and you don't let that ever crumble. Yeah. Who gives a fuck about the Joneses? Well, but it really comes back to like when I was having a rough time and we were on the podcast and Steve and I were at our throats at each other's throats. Like we discussed a lot of time that I spent by myself and whether or not um, Steve agreed with it or disagreed with it or whether people disagreed with it, you know, I still think that that helped me. And I think, um, and what I mean by that is being alone and having my time myself and understanding myself a little more and, and stuff like that. And I think, you know, comparing cultures that that's exactly what we're talking about is comparing how each other reacts to certain moments in our lives. And just because, you know, someone else has a way of dealing with things doesn't mean I have those same things, nor should I impose the way that I do things on, on them. And, and I think another example that I wanted to talk about and, and then I'm done is that um, so it's not a jab, but like my old boss, Corey, um, he was great. But so when I read this article, I was thinking about how our mentality was, was different. And when I started working for him and Max Effort, I was, in my mind, he was the epitome of what I wanted to become. You know, at that time, I wanted to be a, a strength coach and I wanted to make all this money and I wanted to work really hard and do that and that. But then, you know, being alongside him, I realized what kind of work level he was at. I mean, he's a complete animal. He's yeah, like, he's right. like Gary V. He's like Andy Frisella and being with him and around him for two years, I realized towards the end that I'm not like that. I can't, I can't operate at a level that they're at. And for, you know, obviously that would mean that I had, you know, either had to leave or something would have to happen to leave. And it did. And, you know, and that's just another example of, finding yourself you know well, i think that's the key right so so that's the whole point of this is and i want to thank before i get in my closing remarks thanks for everyone that stuck around for this great conversation and uh on facebook live and also the the audio part of it but uh i i want to throw out thanks again to to make this possible we have we have great patrons uh whether it be through the patreon page and I encourage everyone to look at that. And I'm sorry, like it sounds like I'm selling something, but again, this is something that that makes it easier on us every week to to do to do this. Bobby, thank you for the the four roses. I, I literally just uh, if you're not watching the video and you're listening to the audio, as, as I just uh, poured the rest of the I like it. J Japanese four roses into my glass. <laughs> so thank you for donating the bottle. Uh, thank you, uh, Spencer, for the the microphones. Thank you to Avi for the. The, the new laptop that's going to make this a lot easier on us. Does Japan um, not have to put the proof on it? No, it's 86. Okay. It's 86. Uh, thank you to uh, Tinderbox at Easton for the, uh, the, the My Father La Gran Oferta. Uh, listen to, to part one, 99.1, to, to listen to our review on that, that cigar, as well as the uh, review on Four Roses Super Premium that uh, Bobby brought across the world to us. 
Altidus USA, I enjoyed the Butera. That was a, uh, it's always a good smoke. It, it's a good morning smoke. It's a good end of the night smoke. It, it's always good. Uh, and, and again, uh, we'll have to post, I'll have to look up where we actually featured that cigar because there's actually a, um, yeah, Bobby Hirschman Patreon page. It's uh, patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. You can donate anything you want right now. Uh, per month, but we are going to be doing in twenty. Did your mind go where mine went? Anything <laughs> money wise? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, yeah. my point is, is that we're going to be doing something. So if you if you jump on the Patreon page now and you start your donation, we have a handful of people right now that are, are gracious enough to uh, and generous enough to support the podcast because they enjoy it, and I love that. But they are uh, going to receive the welcoming gift for whatever tier that we do and we're going to be working on uh just bourbon and bs podcast uh swag so if you want to get on it now definitely get on that uh if you want to wait that's fine we understand but we will uh definitely come to the table with something is aj gonna give some of his coffee there's a lot of different sponsorships that we want to like get yeah and that's the other thing bobby you bring that up is that we want to do something like if, if kentucky double wants to to donate it's not something that we're going to use it's something if you want to donate a kentucky double to the uh podcast it's something that was that donated no Jeff that was my christmas gift for, yeah, oh yeah. So, okay so i my, saw that and i'm like you motherfuckers all right all right so <laughs> so down. all right so calm down keeping so, up with the joneses ta- no i was talking Jess. to these guys <laughs> all right listen listen <laughs> let me finish do i have to mute everyone's mic yeah maybe <laughs> okay but no no don't do that my, my point is, is that those are the things that we want to be able to put out to people that are, are doing, not only supporting us by sharing it and, and listening like and everything else, but I want to have something for a giveaway on social media. I also want to have something that we can give away to the, the patrons, you know, like something that if you're, you're supporting it financially, it, it helps us out to, to make this a self-sustaining podcast. So uh, like Avi, who donated the, 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 the MacBook, he's like, all I want is if you guys do T-shirts, I want a T-shirt. I think that's a fair trade. That's what I'm saying. So I'm the same way. Give me those absolutely. ten event T-shirts. Give absolutely. Me that in the podcast. Can I have one? Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, so with the comparison culture, I'm going to be very brief. All I want to say is that based on everything you guys said, you guys covered a lot. When I look at the comparison culture, is the 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 biggest takeaway for me and what I've learned over the years is when I see people that are maybe able to afford things that I can't. They are... They convey a happier image. Doing things for their significant other. You, you brought up the relationship thing. What was that? I was going to say, you're looking at a snapshot, though. Looking at a snapshot, but that that's... I look at those things as motivation. That's the difference. Okay. Years ago, I used to look at it as like, I need to drive that car. I need to to live in that house, I need to do these things. I need to have that girlfriend or wife. I need to to be able to, you know, have the white picket fence, and, the garage, and the, the garage, whatever. My my point is, is that now my mentality and what I want to convey to anyone that's that's listening at this point is use that as motivation in a smart sense. Figure out how you can get there. If you don't have the capacity, that's a self realization. Not everyone's going to be a CEO that's making. $10 million a year or whatever it is, right? You know, $1 million a year, six figures, whatever, whatever it might be. I, I think that you have to look at it as a motivation is that to be able to afford this, whether it be financially or even personally in your life, time-wise even, to take those vacations to Japan, it's one of those things that you have to figure out how do I place myself and build myself up to the point that I can actually do this. Use those things as motivation. That's the comparison culture to me anymore, is that I need to figure out, is like, is this something that I want to, to do no matter what the cost yeah. and go in debt? Or do I want to do it where I can actually afford this, where this is my, 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 ex, like my income that I can just throw out there? This is instead of me going to the bar tonight it's I'm going to Japan next week. That's the real way to do it for me. For me, it's 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 use it as motivation to build up yourself personally, uh, emotionally, or financially to to get to that point. So 
Um, that's that's my closing remarks. I'll, I I want to keep it brief. And thank you guys for being here. It, it's amazing. Jake, thank you for being in the garage. You no, grab the mic. No, Do thanks mind? for having me on. I have one more thing for my because I'm doing something for my dad. Get after it. Um, and I'll keep this brief. And it's about that. I actually bought my dad a 1966 Lincoln Continental convertible. Picked that up earlier this year in Missouri. Beautiful car. And wow. basically, and I, my dad's all aware of it and everything. And because he's always wanted that vehicle. Yeah. What color? It, whatever color I'm going to make it. Yeah, it's got to be. Painted. Oh, you're going to paint it. Oh, my bad. So it needs um, some work, but it's a beautiful car. It's it's a very bright pink. So I told my dad, and it was it was really cool when I told my dad. I'm like, I'm making our own family heirloom. Yeah, that's cool. That's exactly right. And I'm like, I love you to death, but I want to make sure that. You know, when you're done having fun with it, that it comes down to me and then I can give it down to the next person. It's amazing. And it's, I know I can't afford it now. And it's just when you're saying that perspective to put all that time and effort in, those are like how I do my goals. And I think at the end of the day, I just wanted to make sure I, my dad means everything. He got me wherever I, you know, got me where I'm at. And it's amazing. And I just wanted to make sure that that realization and just giving big things to him to help me stay on that path. And, and with that, I, awesome. I, I'll, I'll do this. So to everyone out there, it's the holidays and it's, uh, you know, yesterday was Christmas. You need something to choose with. That's, there you that's go. it. So I will say this and it's, it's I'm not going to say a prayer or anything like that. I'm Amen. Not religious anymore. But so as we go into the new year, I want to say this. Thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> And I want to say that uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah uh, to everyone out there that are celebrating the holidays, and Happy New Year to everyone. And I want to raise a glass to everyone that is a part of the Bourbon and BS community, everyone that's in the garage tonight, and yes. uh, to everyone that is still close to you, to everyone that you, 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 you wish were close to you, and to everyone that you realize that they need to be close to you because it's, it, life's too short. And to everyone that's no longer with us, as we're going to 2020, and next year, when we do our first podcast of the new year on, on January 1st, which is next Wednesday, um, we bring the new year with everyone that is, is still with us and no longer with us, that's important to us. Uh, cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers to 2020. Amen. <laughs>